Um, Lulu, I'm so sad that you missed the Black Excellent Brunch. I am too. Oh, man. you didn't go? go. Oh. Yeah, she was. I asked her to be my date because she's the only one of the three of us I don't think had been. And I wanted her to like, you know. I have never been. I thought you were going to. Oh, you were going to work it. Okay. So that didn't happen. I wasn't hired. No. Oh, okay. Oops, my bad. Because I was thinking, I, I was thinking, I've been Jeffrey's catered it, and so Lulu's the only one left out. My bad, Jeffrey. Should have called well, your last then. Well, no, I was outside of town though, so I knew I, I knew I couldn't make it. But get I was for the saying, streets. Like... Get for the streets. I'll leave it to Jeffrey. <laughs> to say, well, well, I haven't been. I wasn't here, but I haven't been. Why bring that up, friend? <laughs> um, I'm out of town, thing. thugging with my rent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not going to say the rest because we do not want to get a copyright strike. We don't know how her lawyers are working. You guys, I just want to say that the episode that we did in the studio was so good. Um, it was sec- fun. It was so fun. It's the second promo coming out, Jeffrey, where you are once again the scene, the scene stealer. Wait, we promo in another episode? I mean, another clip, but we got a new episode we're doing right now. Yeah, I know, but we have a second promo because there was two promos that I couldn't decide between for the last episode in the studio. So the second one is coming out today. It's the one when I ask, how do you know you've met your person? And Jeffrey, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you being the hoe that you is, <laughs> you answered. <that. laughs> I tell you a lot. Listen, I had a lot of people that was like, "Y'all need to be in the studio more often." And I was like, "A part of me, I was like, wait, y'all watch this?" <laughs> yes. I, I don't think I'm like. I mean, I I'm not speaking for y'all, but even, you know, I'm like, I don't think I'm that entertained when people are watching. You know me, so I'm like, oh, you actually watch this, <laughs> Jeffrey? We have a fan base. Lord, that makes yeah, me we have a fan. No, we that have really a fan. makes me want to censor myself. No, please don't. <laughs> then you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's how you get fired, friend. <laughs> That's how you get fired. No, like we want you to. You're on here to be yourself. And what's what's interesting is I'm looking at the metrics. Only a tenth of the people who follow us no are um the followers are a tenth of the people who actually watch us. So if like I have like 30k on my page, it's actually like 300k who are watching. If I have like let's say 20k on my other page, it's actually like 200. It's crazy how it's a tenth of the people who are watching are the ones who are following. And I don't think they think that we can still see the metrics. Like, I see you, friend. You didn't click the button, but I see you. So for anybody who's watching right now and who's taking it for granted, please start following the platforms on which you see the show because when it's time for us to get sponsors so we can be in the studio, because why aren't we in the studio, guys? Money. So if, the, money, the money. Right, if you would like us to get paid for our labor and have Please. a be in the studio, then Please. you have to follow us so that the other 90% of you who are coming here for free without being acknowledged can be used for sponsorship. So please. Please, okay? We're too cute to be broke. <laughs> and we need black cars to take us to the studio. Y'all got to pay for that. Right. <laughs> by, by the way, that was the pitch for Jeffrey and Lulu to be on the show. I said, guys, we are too cute and too talented to be broke. And they said, well, I'll see you Monday. That's, that was the well, pitch. I ain't calling myself broke. No, 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 no. Bro- broke means to ever be broke. Like, we don't ever want to be thinking about, can I afford the extra guac? Yeah. I want to be able to have a surplus. And right now, my surplus is not plus. Surplus it could be. Guac. Yeah. Perfect example. I should be able to fly Delta well, first class and be in the studio. Well, you know, I'm a chef, so I'll make y'all some extra guac. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Jeffrey, we're going to... We actually have it scheduled to be in the studio again for the January 8th episode. That's our Monday back. You guys, the 18th of December is our last taped episode because life. Life, right? And so because the 18th is our last taped episode, we're not back again for almost a month. We're back in the studio on January 8th because I feel like for the New Year Who This episode, it makes sense for us to be in person and see each other for the first time in the year. Um, Lulu and I are going to be in New York. Uh, this We just found out we're going to be in New York the last week of the, of the year. Where are you going to be, uh, Jeffro? Uh, I have not planned my life past this Thursday, so you will find <laughs> out. <laughs> well, if you want to be in New York, back. if you want to be in New York, I'm just saying. Me I, don't, and I don't do cold. I'm sorry, I don't do cold weather. I grew up in Chicago. I did it for 18 years, gave my life to it, and I, I never again. I grew up in Boston. I did it for 20 years, but you know. I don't even I own anything for weather below like 60 degrees. Oh, no, I'm going to be in New York dressed like a like a confused Californian. <laughs> lots of shorts layered over each other i don't even have the co- yeah i'm gonna have to find a winter coat in the back of my closet for my east coast days i'm um, speaking of clothes guys i have a complaint we have, we have a, against you guys in the studio i don't know if the bubbly was bubbling you all uh told me that you gave me an assignment to do a thirst trap before december 31st oh i was gonna follow up on that today oh i did <laughs> i did it <laughs> thank you jeffrey of course you'd, you'd be the the whole accountability partner did you do your thirst trap by the way i did it on friday on oh. Friday, I posted a live where I was wearing the kind of shirt that I would normally wear, not like this, where it's covered up. It was, it was a V-neck. 
And it, I don't care. I'm sorry. It was a cute V-neck. I was getting lots of compliments. People were putting lots of purple stars in the chat because it was a purple shirt. I posted it on my YouTube, thought nothing of it, got all this great feedback. And then I wake up the next morning and it went downhill. The first comment Natasha, was, it went downhill. Did you see this post? I don't believe in t- uh, we didn't oh, approve it. So I can I, I send you the un- no, the girls were out, honey. They 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 mm. were they were out the way they would normally be out. And a the live girl- video is not a thirst trap photo, Blue. So that does not count. Sorry. Yeah. It's more than a thirst trap. It was 78 minutes of my titties out. That's more than a picture. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Well, anyways, mm-hmm. anyways, I post this the, the first day. Oh my god, Blue, I've learned so much from what you shared. X, Y, and Z. You look nice. Second day, where those come from? That's when I knew that the tide had turned. <laughs> <laughs> Where those come from was the first comment that knew, let me know I was in trouble. By the time I took a nap, because y'all know I love me a nap, and woke up again, the next comment was, titties! Like, it just devolved into men just writing titties in the comments. Hey, can you more? <laughs> just, titties! And at, 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 then I started getting DMs, people offering to ejaculate on my chest. Oh. How much they paying? Right. Jeffrey, <laughs> Listen, we got to pay for the studio time, Blue. You, look, you better use what you got to get another. what we need. We are not, we are not pimping out my, my chest for us. You know what, Jeffrey? You are such a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, listen, and I was so appalled. <laughs> what happened, Were you? Were you? I was. I was appalled. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm smiling because one of them was cute. And I was like, why do you have to say titties? You could have made a whole sentence. You could ask me out for, for a coffee or something. But no, I don't like that kind of attention because think about it. And Lulu, you can attest. I, I think Jeff, for you as well. What people say to you in person is very different than what they say online. Absolutely. I have never in my life been out in the street and had somebody yell, Tededs! Right? What I say online I is different. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all the wrong people I'm, to have I'm a sorry, Natasha. Person. I'm sorry, Natasha. What were you saying? She's like, I've had people yell, Tededs! Really? Tededs! <laughs> Like it was a tick, guys. <laughs> Why do y'all not seem appalled? Like I came here for you guys to be remorseful and take back the dare and say you poor thing. You've been subjected no. to sexual harassment. You I be think. Used to it. I think it's more why are you surprised than us being appalled. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, have you never been on the internet? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I, I am highly I respected. Down the street in an urban city. <laughs> yes. Walking down the street in an urban city. Yes, I've been called things. Right. But like, I thought that because the platform is so much about emotional intelligence and psychological well-being and X, Y, and Z, that I thought that our, our, our supporters had a level of respect for me where they wouldn't just be screaming titties and cap locks and exclamation points. All that went out the window when that shirt went out the window. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lulu, you're going to have to help me do a thirst trap because I'm not doing another video like that. I'm, I, I, I don't. Maybe it's because I don't show them. Maybe that's why they're surprised. That's probably why they were just shocked. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. We still got a month. Well, right. you know, what I'm, I mean, we do have a month. You know what I'm thinking about, too? I will say um, right before the titties uh, incident, what I'm calling Titty Gate. A guy named Miles Garrett, I think his name is. He's like, I don't know what he does. Does he dribble a ball? Does he throw a ball? I don't know if it's football, basketball. I don't know what it is, but he posted a video that reminded the world that uh, sweatpants, uh, great sweatpants season is back um, in full force. And I posted, wow, thank you, Miles, for the reminder. <laughs> so I know what it's like to see somebody online. You see something you like and you make a comment. But you see how I kept it respectful. See, she's talking about titties, and meanwhile, she over there typing <laughs> dick. No, I, I did not type dick. I typed it. <laughs> mentally, mentally, she was like, ooh, nice photo. That brain said dick. Yeah. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter what I'm thinking. What I said was, oh, gray sweatpants season is back. I can't think that of is that. Just as a, that is, we know what you're saying, girl. I'm going to send you the video, guys, because y'all need to see this. It's glorious. No, guys, I, I need you to know that I'm saying that I'm not upset about people having sexual urges. I'm just saying there's more kind and compassionate ways to, you know, acknowledge like, no, mine looks good. At least you know what the people was here for. They're not, they not pulling, you know, the wool over their, your eyes. Trying to, oh, yes, Blue. The conversation. No, they said, Blue, I want them titties and let's have them. <laughs> wow. You are getting supposed- off in- <laughs> this is what support looks like. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it back to you guys how, <laughs> because I don't like this being all about my titties, especially now that they're covered up again. How have you been objectified, and how do you feel about it? Clearly, I'm Forrest Gump and still making peace with it. Have you ever been objectified for a part of your body, and how have you dealt with it? Using it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jeffrey, are you talking about your penis? 
I mean, that's what, you know, you talk about gray sweatpants. That's what we get objectified for. I've never posted a gray sweatpants photo, though. But You've never done a gray sweatpants photo? No, you just like swim trunks and, you know, beach stuff. But Would you wet. be upset if a... you, one of your homegirls made a comment about you in gray sweatpants? Lutasha does. And Brandy. <laughs> oh, my heavens. Look who you saying dick, too? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I would actually be appalled if they did not say something. <laughs> so men like to be objectified. Uh, publicly and secretly, yes. <laughs> wow, that makes me feel better. It, it really is fun to sexually harass people. Like I, <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The show has gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Explain, Lulu. Please unpack that so that the, we don't get comments. You know, you're about to be become the new Jeffrey. <laughs> so I, I thought my Jeffrey was a problem. I started sipping my drink. I said, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Jeffrey was like, shit, even I wouldn't say that. Lulu, explain, <laughs> for, explain for the audience why you think it's fun to sexually harass grown men. It is because um, when I, I worked at this yoga studio one time and they had a juice bar and there was this little cute boy who worked at the juice bar. And so I used to sexually harass him all the time. And it used to make him so uncomfortable and it was so fun to like watch him squirm. So I was like, I get it. Like, I understand. Oh, like, wait. People... It got worse the story. I thought the story was going to fix it. Okay, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Lulu, the story was supposed to make you be like, oh, misunderstanding. So it's exactly what you said. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, well, this is just to say, man, if you've been sexually harassed, if you like it, smile. And if you don't, don't go into Lulu's yoga studio. No. Um, I, Jeffrey Cleveland. I, 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 like I just want to be friends. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, Lulu, how have you been objectified? How have you been objectified uh, for, because you're a beautiful woman. Like, what do they focus on? Um, Definitely butt. And I play volleyball for many, many, many years. I've talked and, about your butt. I've actually said that to you a couple of times. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I forgot I'm pansexual. I, okay. Yeah, I have, I make comments about Lulu's butt every time I see her and it just hit me. My bad friend, is that objectifying you? Do you mind that I be talking about how, about how your booty is? I like it. Okay, because I mentioned it like every time I see you, I just I just realized that. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's a hey. good butt. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Thank you, Stairmaster. You know right. what? So what, I, what I've heard is I'm titties, Jeffrey's dick, and Lulu is mm -hmm. hi butt, good butt. I like I like how you put the little the deepness and the elongated on it because like they let them look big. I mean, I mean, <laughs> wow, yo, this show has gone off the rails. Ooh, Mind you, this is the same Jeffrey. We, we offered to get blocked. This is the same Jeffrey who said, "Hey, Blue, I missed it when we talked about serious topic." I said, "Okay, friend, let's pitch." Pitch a well, serious I mean, topic. Move on, Jeff. You should tell that story about how you got catfished by your own dick. Oh, that wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. That might, I don't know if we can do. <laughs> Does YouTube I... find you for so much? Uh, yeah, let let language? let's start saying penis. Um, Jeffrey, <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, why? How were you catfished by your own penis? That is literally the. That literally is the story. <laughs> literally, Come on, said, someone catfished you and use your own penis picture. I said, wait a minute, that looks for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've seen that before. That the picture. <laughs> right. Okay. I know it's a good listen. When they steal it, that's how you know it's a good picture, a good thirst trap. <laughs> so wait a minute. Somebody catfish you using a picture, your own penis picture. Mm -hmm. And did you t say anything like, hey, that's me? Like, what no, did you say? I, don't, I just blocked. You blocked them. You didn't have no conversation. Yeah, no. I what I'm gonna do? Meet up with you to then confront you about like it ain't, it's, okay. <laughs> this, is the, this, is, this is my real penis. Oh right? man. Like, yeah, no, block. <laughs> I've been catfished before. I was put catfished by a girl um, when I was living in New York. Um, it was rough. It was rough. Uh, I was talking to my friend earlier about how dating women has really impacted the way that I date men. Because I know what women do. That gets on people's goddamn nerves. They <laughs> said dating women has impacted the way you date men. Yeah, because a lot of women date men, but don't know how it's like to date themselves. That's people. Yeah. And so we've been socialized to not know what it's like to date our own gender identity. And I think dating women is probably the reason why I date men so differently. And I, I often wonder when I say that men clap, you're like, yes, if all y'all dated yourselves, you would know how hard this is. I was like, well, pause. Not them niggas. I said, but if y'all, I was like, have you thought that if you dated other men, you'd also feel the same way? And they get quiet when I say that because now I feel gay to them. Right. But I, I feel like dating your own gender identity because some people you know if you're a stud or femme that matters but dating your own gender identity can be very revealing about the, the difficulties of that you come with because we all come with things that are annoying like I women are very whole, passive yeah i just had women a whole conversation with somebody about dating themselves because they don't know how to be single and right now they're in a very they're in a very toxic relationship but to them 
the red flags look like carnival Roses. flags and roller coasters. <laughs> and I'm like, so you know that's <laughs> right. You know that's toxic, right? You know that is stress. Stress kills. You know you don't. Do you know how bad it is for the guilty Grace King to call you toxic? <laughs> Like it was, yes, it was even, you know why? And it was toxic because it was literally like reminding me of situations. I mean, I'm like, you know, this is toxic, right? Oh no, but I'm in love and we love each other. I honestly, I said, okay, but is love enough? Is love enough? No, it's not. If Jeffrey oh, Smith Jr. is telling you that you need to do better, I need you to understand that you have lost plot. It's time. I was, the thing, and I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but it was just the things that was, I was just like, why don't you just date yourself for a little while? Because also they haven't been single in, I think the longest was like five months or something like that. And I'm like, you are mid thirties. You need to, you need to learn what you like and love yourself. Yeah, you do. I, I think taking a break from dating actually helps you recalibrate and get your palate cleansed. Because if you could keep going from person to person, everybody tastes like the person before. Like, so it, it, it all starts to get all muddled. But me taking the past year off from dating, I think is the reason why I'm so excited about Grey Prince sweatband season because um i care again <laughs> i care very much because i took some time off i can't believe you're still being the person the, Wait, the reasonable so you're voice. picking from a dating pool of gray sweatpants niggas no i'm not i <laughs> that's what it sounded like blue <laughs> no it, it means that <laughs> she said fuck a soup fuck a nigga in scrubs a doctor or something she going for the gray sweatpants nigga she going down to the john reed fitness <laughs> you know why i mean i have been gray sweatpants don't mean he doesn't have a job Right? Exactly. There's mm. entrepreneurs. There's uh, content creators. There's um, <laughs> fans. musicians. <laughs> only fans. I would not. Honestly, so funny. I have so many friends who have only fans, and I'm very pro sex worker. Um, but I don't think I would date a guy who was thirst trapping that hard. Not because of the sexy time. Just because I, a man who needs that much attention, comes with stuff that I don't got. I don't. I ain't got it. It's just. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't want a guy who's that vain. I want a man who who looks good and feels good about his appearance and puts effort into it. But at a certain point, um, I always tell this story. This guy that had a crush on me, but he thought I should have a crush on him. That's what happens when a, a fine nigga has a crush on you. He's like, you <laughs> like me first. You didn't see me. Like what's happening? Wait, he told you that you supposed to like him first. Oh, this is how he told me passive aggressively. Um, oh. he we were hanging out all night, drinking, kiki, and talking. It was very a sexy vibe. At two o'clock in the morning, he's walking out to leave, and there's a big. There used to be a big mirror next to my door at my old studio. Remember my old studio? Mm -hmm. There was a big mirror right next to the door. He stopped at the mirror, flexed, looked at himself, checked out his beautiful face, and said, "Oh, I am still fine. Okay, she's just tripping," and walked out. He said she's just tripping. Yeah, and I'm just and I sat down on the couch like. Was I supposed to just gobble your penis when you walked into my house? Like, what? what is happening? Like, I thought we had a great evening, but apparently I didn't stroke him enough. Well, did you invite him over because of his gray sweatpants? He's in charge. <laughs> you know what, Jeffrey? I don't like where this is going. Um, <laughs> and neither it, did he. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so funny because I did realize that he only wanted he only wanted sex. So I'm happy I didn't stroke his ego. We don't talk about it enough. Like I like objectifying men who make me feel safe first. If you make me feel like you give a fuck about me, now I want you to feel pretty. But if you only want to smash, making you feel pretty is only going to make your ego uh, bigger and the sex might be actually worse. Selfish men are bad in bed. So I don't like to stroke your ego unless I know that you can still put it down afterwards. Is that just me recognizing that selfish men are bad in bed or do you have your own experiences around that? uh yeah i mean they're selfish so like they're gonna be a selfish lover if they're a selfish person you know oh jeffrey do you agree with that that selfish people are selfish lovers not all the time because i'm it's... selfish ooh, ooh. i mean that's why we asked right? <laughs> but, I know, I, I love... <laughs> but i know where i'm not selfish <laughs> Where is oh, that? Yeah, what where is, is this that? episode about? Hold on. <laughs> now, wait, wait, wait. This was not the subject matter I was told we were going to be discussing. <laughs> I know. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't know what what is in the air. What is in the air? Okay, sorry guys. This this yeah. is not meant to be a <laughs> That's why we got derailed because you kept on saying dick in the back of your throat. Okay, so today's episode is supposed to be about a topic that Lulu actually uh uh, pitch to us that we loved because I was like, what do you all, you guys feel passionate about talking about? And is there anything with dating relationships? Because in my mind, Lulu is my dating guru. And she keeps telling me, just date niggas who like you and you'll be fine. Just date only date men who like you. 
That's it. And my, I've, I've known nothing but peace ever since then. Lulu, I actually did a, a thread about you on Twitter. I'm probably going to post on my IG today. I've known nothing but peace since then. So I want Lulu to talk about relationships with us because maybe she can help some of y'all out there the way she's helped me. And what she said she wanted to talk about was the concept of submissive breadwinners. The <laughs> ideology being that men say that they want they, they want to be the bad bitches, right? I want a woman who has her own. I want a woman who brings something to the table. I want a woman who is the table, X, Y, and Z. And they also want us to be submissive. And Lulu said, how? How am I going to go to work every day and be the breadwinner and be a boss bitch and be submissive at the same time, make it make sense, Quay? Uh, so take it away, Lulu. Uh, what made you want to talk about this topic? Because I'm actually really um, intrigued by this because I think I've been a submissive breadwinner before. I've actually been. <laughs> and it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Okay. I brought home the bacon and then I had to fry it myself. Go ahead, friend. I mean, I, that's basically it. Like, I think like these podcast dudes, they talk about feminism and women don't know how to, you know, submit and all this stuff. But then it's also the same thing. What do you bring to the table? You need to have your own. You broke because you want a nigga to take you to eat, all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, why? What's wrong with you courting me? And also, like, if I'm the boss, then I'm the boss. If I'm the breadwinner, I am in charge, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, so that's a provocative uh, point, Lulu. Does the, the, does the breadwinner, is that what makes you the head of the household or is it something else? I think it really does. It doesn't make you the head of the household per se, because I, I like to think of marriage as like a partnership. And if you're married to somebody 20, 30 years, you guys are going to, I feel like you, you switch roles sometimes. Like maybe sometimes you're making more money and sometimes he is and you help each other out. So that's different than I think than just like dating. Yeah. So with dating, it's just interesting. And I, all of this is with a grain of salt because I feel like there are plenty of women who don't mind being submissive breadwinners, I'm sure, somewhere. But I just, like the concept just doesn't really make sense. I feel like the men are asking for things and they don't even really know what they're asking for. Like you want a woman to have like this boss. All the boss women that I know are not submissive and and not not even like in a bad way, but they all have men. They have men who know how to to deal with their personalities and like, how 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 like ambitious they are or aggressive or whatever the case may be and it doesn't take away from their femininity in my opinion but I think the guys who are saying that they want a woman like that they don't realize you have to have a certain type of personality in order to achieve like that high you know success right you have a certain personality for sure as a man and as a woman and yeah. I think a lot of men are, are probably not comfortable dealing with that type of personality in my opinion that's a great point. And I'm I'm curious about Jeffrey. What are your take on submissive breadwinners from a heteronormative lens from what Lulu was talking about? And also with the boys. I'm 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 one curious my, about how this translates. Well, one of my favorite quotes uh came from Lutasha Bradley, and we told her it needs to be put on a t-shirt. Our guru. The problem, the problem with niggas in LA is they want to be bad bitches too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and she was speaking from, you know, the dating pool that you know a lot of women go through out here and everything. And I was like, and after hanging around here in the stories, I'm like, you need to put that shit on a t-shirt. Drake was too hurt. No, no, don't, don't get, don't get in trouble with Drake because Drake said uh, niggas are the new bad bitches and he might sue you ass. He's been very right, but lately. you also need to listen. Tell maybe tell the women to stop dating niggas born after nineteen seventy five. Wait, whoa, 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 nineteen seventy five. Maybe nineteen eighty. I get nineteen eighty. Wow. Those born after, and I'm an eighties baby, but those born after nineteen eighty. This this new technological world that we live in, we all want to live a soft life everybody just want to live a soft life and be spoiled and live luxury and do nothing your and pronouns so the, matter i know i love how you said we you, you included yourself and i love that yeah for you. and so i do think the way we date now it's very different from the way i always say things are very different now because you know in the 90s it was a little boring social media internet was not around like that and so you literally it was like oh meet you that old school style of courting dating and now fast forward where you can swipe between 20 different apps and be talking to people from all around the world at the same time what's what option i have the best of, of any options people have so many options mm -hmm. like people, people have too many options and they're too always many options. something better like that's i think what one of the problems is like they always think they can do better than whatever they have there was a study that was done that the least amount of options you have the more likely you are to be happy and the company that they said that illustrates that the best is costco Costco only has two to four types of everything. There's like three ketchups. 
You got three choices. <laughs> <laughs> there's two, there's two kinds of guacamole. You got two choices. Yeah, you got about forty of them at a time. <laughs> yeah. So Costco <laughs> actually is like what the dating pool should be. Costco makes a concerted effort to have like small buying quantities. in bulk. No, not buying in bulk, but small quantities of high. I, I kind of like that. No. no, no, it's not buying in bulk. Here's, here's the thing: it's, it's not buying in bulk; it's buying long term. The, the the words matter because Costco. If you buy peanut butter, you're gonna be eating peanut butter all year long, right? And it's, but it's only two kinds. So Costco forces you to pick from only a small pool and commit for a long time because of the high quantity. That's how uh, dating like should that. be. Wait a minute. I don't like you, that. <laughs> I don't like it's that variety. Like, you, uh -huh. you can buy a variety, variety pack. You be in that variety pack all year though. True. I'll be shuffling in and out. One day it'll be Doritos. One day it'll be the Cheetos. One day it'll be the, the <laughs> salt and vinegar chips. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and and honestly, too, I had, you one person can be the variety pack. I had an ex one time. He was like, "Look, I can't keep up with you. Every day it's a different bitch." And I was like, "Oh, I love that for me." Like, <laughs> I, I think he was like complaining, but I got really excited. He was like, "Here we go again." Like, bitch, you don't know how to take a take a. I know how to take compliments even when they're not compliments. That's something I'm working on. But no, I like the idea of regenerating with the same person and rediscovering the same person. We were talking about long-term friendships. Last night, me and Lulu were talking. No, yesterday afternoon. I was hungover. I had a long weekend. Um, yesterday afternoon, Lulu and I were talking. And we were talking about long-term friendships and about how you watch people evolve. Like you see five or six different versions of a person when they're your friend. It's the same thing when you are in a relationship with your best friend who also likes to rub your butt. You know what I mean? I think a dream relationship is where you get to evolve together. So it's one person, but it's different iterations of that person. And that's what keeps it spicy, like a variety pack. Because you're yeah. going to change like as you age and as you mature and as you learn things about yourself and things that you want, you don't want. So I think a lot of relationships fail is when you're not able to grow together or like you're not able to appreciate the growth or just you guys going grow in different directions and stuff like that. Yeah, I really believe that as humans like we honestly the, our desires our wants our needs they change every five to seven years like yeah. and that you know growth evolving whatever and your partner might be on their fifth seventh year change meanwhile you're only in year two so you are still quote unquote the same mm -hmm. and you looking at them like all of a sudden you change like well i'm supposed to i mean as long as i'm not changing into a a violent you know abusive person or something like that i feel like change is something that you can understand and you know we can get through you know we can do it together yeah, I think that's the difference between growing with and growing away from. Because if you're growing with me, even if I'm a couple steps behind you, we're still growing together. And you're helping inspire me because I understand the trajectory. But if we're growing yeah. apart, it doesn't matter. Even if we were both on the same page, we're still going in different directions. That's sometimes thing, people, people are... glow up away from each other. They glow up and then they break up. Yeah, people are scared to admit the growing away from each other part. Yeah. That's when the relationship goes downhill, get toxic because... People, it's routine. You get very comfortable in a routine and, you know, this person being there all the time and then it's like, oh, this person is not going to be here. Let me just stay in this, you know, toxic or uncomfortable situation. And then that's when it goes really downhill. Being single is not the worst case scenario. Being in a bad relationship is 10 times worse than being single. Maybe being single is so fun. And that's another thing that... <laughs> okay, Carisha. <laughs> Let me say, being single is so Let's... fun. It... Go oh, ahead, go I was going to say, it took me a while though to really, because like, I'm now four and a half years in being single. Oh, we're worried. Was, we're worried. I would say like, like the first two, you know, it's an adjustment because coming out of a long relationship, it it was like watching Bambi learn how to walk all over again. It was. No, it really that's, was. Now really you running now, huh? Now, baby, <laughs> you running. Let me tell you. Shoom. No, really, we're, call, we're calling animal control now. Like, catch that nigga. What's wrong with him? I told like, y'all last, last week, I was literally backpack walking out the door to LAX and then literally got a reminder from Blue that we were filming in studio. And I said, well, damn. Okay. He sure did. He was a flight risk. Like, I literally had to put a dog tag on him or something. Like, we have to track her. Jeffrey, you have to be here on Mondays. One day a week, please. It's I have a question. It was Wednesday, I didn't have no association with, with with taping that day. And mind you, we skipped Monday because he was sick. How are you? You were sick on yeah. Monday, but on Wednesday, you had your backpack. You see that? You see that? You see that? Yeah, I left on Tuesday. I mean, I'm sorry, I left on Thursday. It's that guilty grace. And I, I did see you. You were immediately in Miami five minutes after we taped. Like, I think I, think I was still uploading the episode. And Jeff was like, Miami? I was like, damn, really? That wasn't, that wasn't, <laughs> even, the, that wasn't even the actual destination. Miami became a... Uh, a secondary trip. <laughs> things change. Ooh, we'll talk about it off camera. Oh, yeah. You, you be telling yourself on the show. I have a question about expectations, right? I was thinking about the term submissive breadwinners and how I said earlier that I had been one. And I think now I would not call myself a submissive breadwinner. I would call myself a submissive alpha, but I'm not an alpha. I'm just alpha presenting. Like I'm not an alpha at all, but because of the way that I talk and how passionate I get people to assume I'm an alpha. I think for me, I would love a hyper masculine beta. 
if that makes sense. Like someone it did who's... not. All of these words, what? No, because he... <laughs> <laughs> Lulu he's understand it. Bottom, what you say? No, see, Lulu, he's... everybody's verse, Jeffrey. I'm saying everybody's verse. Okay, <laughs> put it in your language. Everybody verse. Okay, Jeffrey's like, my life. <laughs> he's like, put it back in homosexual terms. Um, by the way, guys, when I, ever since I was little, I've always said homosexual because it sounded kinder. So I, I have a hard time saying homosexual. I don't know why. I'm, I, I'm, I always say homosexual. People are like, you have a speech impediment? No, to put it back in, in you know, the game so terms. I am about the rating that is going to go in this episode. <laughs> it's going to be rated R, okay? Or NC-17, maybe, because this episode started off with Dick and has not bounced back <laughs> since. But no, the way I look at it is, I have oh very God. powerful energy, but I'm naturally nurturing and submissive. So publicly, people think that I'm hyper alpha but back home i'm happy chilling i think i want somebody who's chill publicly to offset how hype i can be but who know who will crack my back behind closed doors so i am submissive alpha would not mind a hyper masculine beta if that makes sense mind you the, the gag is i think both of us are probably neither of those terms but just as far as how they present publicly does that make sense yeah it's giving yin and yang you said not all the words. These are all English all, words, Jeffrey. All those, no, all those terms, those new. You know, I'm, I'm trying to keep. Alpha and beta is not true. That is Latin. <laughs> that is the original language. Are you serious? Now, now they got this thing I call it being a side, and I'm like, what is this? It's, see, look, it's, I, I didn't use nothing newfangled. I use words from the '80s. Okay, see, submissive I'm keep, I'm and alpha. Where, I'm keeping up with the, the uh, terminology that I'm learning in real time, and now you also giving me terminology to ask. I'm a bank. soft bad bitch who wants a hyper masculine cool ass. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I. Man, I was trying to make it educational, but Jeffrey's here. <laughs> He's like, girl, if you don't talk with your inside voice. We don't speak in layman's terms. That's layman's terms, yes. Jeff, what do you, you think about that? An alpha or a beta? What happened? I asked yeah. Jeff, if he, does he consider himself to be an alpha or a oh. beta? Uh, I feel like I go back and forth in both. Because I've uh -huh. been told that I have a very Earth. like because to me I feel like I I feel like I'm very corny like I'm just like I don't give hyper masculine I don't give you you can be corny because you're pretty Jeffrey can we all just say it's pretty privileged Jeffrey would not be corny if he didn't think he was pretty. <laughs> can we all tell the like, truth just... <laughs> look at him blushing because I caught you pretty niggas love to talk about I'm corny <laughs> I'm corny I, if you were I, ugly you would not be corny you'd be the smartest <laughs> person on this call. <laughs> you can afford to be corny niggas stop lying to the people <laughs> sorry i'm sorry this, this episode has really gone off the rails <laughs> I, don't, listen, I don't know i've never uh I, I don't know i've never had to quote unquote put up with myself as somebody dating me would so I, oh, yeah. know, I just you know i don't think i, I think you always shoot yourself i, 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 think, I think i tell, think you would, be, you would beat up jeffrey if you dated yourself you would cuss him out i used to always tell people in the beginning of like listen one thing about me, I'm a lot. I don't know what that means. I don't know exactly what it is, but I can tell you that I am a lot. And I've kind of stopped saying that now. I don't do that anymore. But yeah, that's all that. I don't think you're a lot, Jeff. Well, I guess I never dated you, but. You never dated me. <laughs> when Jeffrey's confessing his sins, Lulu, just let him. Okay, this is a. <laughs> <laughs> this man didn't get a subconscious. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they call Gemini energy demonic. This is exactly why Gemini's are considered social terrorists, like terrorists are. Yeah, uh, your love sign is, is Gemini. Your rising is Gemini. Um, they've had petitions about Gemini's. Like the world, it's the least liked sign in the entire zodiac, and because of that, though, like yes, that's the problem. They like you, then you're gone, and then they're upset. That does happen. Oh, look at Jeffrey pouted. Stop, it, <laughs> Stop telling the truth on the show about Just the truth. Connect her mic. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question, guys, right? Because we're talking about submission. What does submission mean to you guys? What does that word even mean? I hate the word outside of the bedroom, honestly. I don't want nobody. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Why y'all chuckle? Why y it's on brand. We really, really, really appreciate the consistency of your branding. Go ahead. Because I don't want nobody that like in, it's going to be submit. I don't know. Again, outside of the bedroom. And that's probably like, you know, a little role playing or whatever. I don't want to feel like, oh, somebody is submissive to me. Like, I just, let's just exist. And let's just do this together. And, you know. That was, that so was beautifully you said. So, okay, so for you, Jeff, in relationships that you have, you kind of want y'all to be equals. You don't want anybody submitting to you or whatever, like, you want to equal. Yeah, because yeah, if, you, if you let me walk all over you, baby, I got my Timberlands, I got... Look, That's to and the Toxic King is back. We had a, a small moment of, of compassion, you, and he's back. To, to, not, to a man, like, say if you're in a relationship with him? Wait, say it again, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Would you submit to somebody you were in a, in a relationship with? <laughs> 
<laughs> Lutasha, who would I submit to somebody? I got too much mouth. <laughs> and I tried. You know, listen, I tried. <laughs> you know, I, ha I have too much mouth. Because it all, in theory, it sounds good. But yeah, I got too much mouth. I have too much opinion. Which are you attracted to? When you're dating, are you looking for somebody who's more alpha than you or more beta than you? Neither. Somebody that entertains me, that piques my interest. So everybody right? can get it. Like, it's, 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 it's open season. Oh, yeah, everybody can get it, yeah. Wow, he repeated it too. I was out with it. Everybody Just got me. a chance. Now listen, I don't know if it's gonna work. I actually has oh my god, Lord. I'm never <laughs> You started, you have to have finish at the rule of show. Go ahead. Literally had somebody ask me this weekend, why didn't we date? And mind you, we are cool. We are really, really cool. And the hookup probably ha it had to have happened at least a decade ago, a smooth decade or so ago. And we are cool. And then they literally asked me, fast forward this weekend, why didn't we date? And I'm sitting there like, why didn't you date? It just didn't. I don't think it's wrong with. I don't. I don't honestly. I don't know. I just say honestly. I just don't feel like there was a connection. You I mean, know? that's honest chemistry. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't kid. That thank you. I should have said chemistry. Damn. What did you was, say? I think I said it didn't click. <laughs> it oh, didn't now click. he's thinking his sex was bad. Damn, you don't talk about. Oh, and see, that's the thing. I I think I made sure to say that that wasn't it. So the sex was good. It still didn't click. Yeah, and he also we live in two different states. I don't do long distance. I'm if you live in the valley and I'm here in downtown LA, that's wow. too far of a, uh, I'm not doing an that. hour is too far for you. Yes. No, I'm importing my next partner. I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think what I what I want is out here. Um I just I've said this before, it might be problematic, but I mean it. Um a New York woman is an LA man. Um and I don't mean men from LA, I mean the industry dudes that I'm always meeting. It's very soft girl out here with the dudes. And I just need someone who can deal with cold weather and maybe has, you know, a strong backbone. So for me, <laughs> I'm probably not going to end up dating somebody. Now, mind you, I take it back. If y'all see me with a man on the, in the Mert one day, I'm going to eat my words. <laughs> mind your business if you see me in the Mert <laughs> with a strong black man. But like for right now, it's starting to feel like the more I go to the East Coast, the more I realize I miss that kind of uh, hyper masculinity. I really different. miss it. They're so different than when it's cold. They yeah. really angry. <laughs> Being cold makes you aggressive. I was a little stud like when I lived in New York. I was a little study. I I, I was I was not as tough as I am in, in California. The, the heat this heat makes you soft. So I think for me, I have to be okay with long distance. Um, but I'd probably have to import. Like when you move in. Like you could live there, but when you when you come in here. I'm sorry. Really? You if you the love of your life was living, let's say, in Pittsburgh, you wouldn't want him to move and be with you? They would not be the love of my life. Oh wow! <laughs> they were in Pittsburgh, like Jeffrey. A, I mean, the, and y'all know, y'all know, I be listening. Lou's disgusted. She's like, "Oh, Jeffrey." For the streets, <laughs> y'all know, have fun. However, there are some ways that I am very conservative in the sense of relationships and some things. Like, yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing long distance. Sorry, we got to be here. Lulu, would you do long distance? Like if your booth, Laron, um, he lived in Miami or something, and you had met him, and he was your good friend. Wait, like the whole same story. But he was long distance. Would you have given him a chance? Um, probably. I probably wouldn't have taken it as seriously. And I could do long distance if there's like a time limit on it. Like, or like, okay, Agreed. we're gonna do it for a year, and then someone's gonna move or something like that, like that. But like indefinitely, no. Yeah, no, indefinitely, I couldn't do it. I think within a year, you know, if you care about me enough for us to be discussing who's moving where. But, but if it's yeah, past a year, no. You spent a whole year dating this person, not being together, and then y'all do come together. It's different when they are in town or if you're in town for a weekend or five, six, seven days versus full time all of a sudden living with them. And now you realize this is somebody I don't want to be with. And you didn't gave a whole year of your life because y'all was long distance. And it's like the person that moved is going to end up resenting that they moved. Like, I'm not I mean, it, it depends on what you do with that time, right? If you spend the entire seven days you're visiting them having sex, then yes, you could be surprised when they go outside. You're like, oh, you look different in the sun. But if you're having like real conversations and you're meeting each other's tribes and you're getting a taste of each other's lives. And maybe somebody might stay for a month. Like the way that I work, I could work anywhere. I work remotely. You know what I mean? There are ways to be in a long distance relationship and get a, a slice of life, like a taste of life. I personally think if you're going to move for somebody, you have to at least do like a month in that area to test it out. If I still like you and you still like me after you yes. being out here for a month, yes, then we can discuss it. Cause I, I, I do think that sometimes people put on a vacation them and then you yeah. meet real them. That's yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. I, I I would never want that. I, and also, too, everybody on this uh, panel, um, we we all are are very uh, red blooded people, and there's also the physicality of it all. I just listen. 
look at the ambulance came. Um, I think the trickiest part of a long distance relationship is not being able to reach over in the middle of the night. That would help me. I, I think that that is something that, and I mean, you ladies can let me know if I am <laughs> right or wrong. And I, again, I do not make, I don't make blanket statements. Let me just put that out there. Well, since when? I, I don't make blanket <laughs> statements. I, okay. listen, I might forget to put the disclaimer out there sometimes, but when I say things, I don't mean every single person. Got it. Um, but I do think that that is something that is easier for women, the uh, physical part of it, than it is for men. I think, I think that majority of women, it's not as big of a deal to, not be fucking every night. Oh, can I say? Can I say that on here? I mean, we've said dick about seventy times. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's easy. It would be easier for women uh, versus niggas. Like, yeah. I mean, that's true because we don't orgasm the same. So that part. I mean, <laughs> Blue said, "I need it every night." <laughs> Everybody is different. Like. Everybody. <laughs> I keep learning from the show that I might be a man. My heavens. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Lutasha, did you see she froze? She's like, Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh. <laughs> mm, I, look, physical touch is one of my love languages, guys. It's how I know you care. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> A lot of women are not having orgasms, Blue. You know that. No, you're right. A lot of women are not having orgasms. It's, it's just, I just, I just, skin on skin is very important to me. Now, why not? Is that because these niggas don't know what they're doing? It is, it would be hard for that particular woman to have an orgasm regardless. Like, I don't know. Physiologically speaking, the clitoris is the only part of the human anatomy that is built solely for pleasure. And it's also the part that men are confused around. So the place where the win is. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what's that? I just heard all the men looking at this hand. Like, what, what is that? <laughs> right. There's, there's like thousands of nerve endings in the clitoris. Its only purpose is to make me come. And men think they can ignore it and we'll still get there. So that's is a big one. They're, they're selfish lovers or they truly just don't know what they're doing. Some men are scared of vaginas. In y'all's, in y'all's experience. Some men are really scared of vaginas. Like some men will, it's like they're poking a hole, but they don't want to go down there. And so it's it, uh, some lovers just think of the vagina as something to enter and poke at and then leave. They don't think of it as something to like engage with and look at, which is why so many of us, when we experiment with other women who are not scared to look at it and engage with it, we get a little turned out. Who hasn't been turned out by the right lesbian? I mean, it happens. So, fellas, Wait, fuck like, like, a, like a lesbian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that another, is that another story? Lulu, Lulu, Lulu got quiet. Lulu, you want to share? I've already shared my tea. <laughs> Lulu, you went cross eyed. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Natasha went cross. She's like, yes. Who hasn't? <laughs> no. What I was gonna say is, mm-hmm. I, um, a lot of times with women, especially, you really do need to masturbate and figure out like where it is so you can help him. Because I think a lot of times, well, in my experience, I can only speak for myself. I've been with people where they're they're they want to help. But it's like, if you don't know where it is, how how is he supposed to find it? Like, he doesn't know. Like, it's literally a needle in the haystack. So, yeah. like, you, you have to help. Like, I just because I didn't orgasm, it doesn't mean that he was selfish or he didn't know what he was doing. Every single woman is extremely different. So the shit he was doing with the last girl he was with could very feasibly not make me come. Like, very feasibly. So I think for women, it's really important for you to figure out where it is yourself, where your G-spot is that is going to make you come. You got you to gotta do it. You have to figure it out. It, if you're lucky, you have like a good partner who's like down to y'all can figure it out together. But yeah, like so, I, I don't really feel like it's you can blame men because like once I figured out how to orgasm, I do it all the time now. Like it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Like I, <laughs> I think I, I think okay. you can blame selfish lovers and people who don't know, know their bodies, which is gender neutral. Right. If you have a selfish lover, it doesn't matter where you point. He's not going there because he don't care. Right. Well, and if I you have was... somebody who doesn't know their body, then that also doesn't help. So two questions again for you ladies. Uh, oh. The first time that you orgasmed, was it because you figured it out yourself or did the did you have a partner to help you find it? And then secondly, does that make, for y'all, does it mean like a person is bad in bed if they did not make you orgasm? Oh. So Ooh. I don't think that you're bad in bed if you don't make me orgasm. Well, me, Lutasha, you probably are. Like if you- <laughs> Damn, no. wait, that's like a turn. Wait, wait. <laughs> My vagina is easy. If you can't master this, you suck. Well, damn, Lou, where's this going? Right? But I can, I can always get there. If I, I RSVP, I'm coming to the party. Like, <laughs> Oh, so wait, you, you're getting there with or without him is what you're saying. 
<laughs> I'll get it done. Like I, I, I got it. Don't worry about it. Do you even need him? <laughs> Wait, Lulu. Do you even need him? It doesn't sound like you have to be there. Fine. <laughs> okay. Blue, does it, blue doesn't mean it's a bad, a bad partner for you if they don't make you orgasm. Well, um, how do I say this? I have taught myself how to masturbate hands free. I can masturbate psychically. I've never shared this. That's impressive. It is. It is. I don't think I've ever said that. Was like, wow, new level unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> new level unlocked. Uh, yeah. I was like, what is it like? That's why the like? galaxy lights be going so much over there at that damn house. <laughs> we be sitting over there talking to Blue the whole time. She mentally orgasming. Just over there making herself like, Blue, come back. <laughs> yeah. The whole time. Well, yeah, uh, one of the the great side effects of being a little psychic is I've learned how to psychically please myself. So, um, like Lou, I don't RSVP unless I know I'm coming to the party. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty easy to make happy as long as you're you care about me. I have dated someone who he was so rough and into the pound town, like he was just so rough. And I'm a very soft woman, like I don't really need the rough stuff. Like there's, and I've said this before, there's some women who have very deep service cervixes, like it would take like a, a foot for you them to feel anything. And some women who have shallow cervixes, right? And there's also some women who are very sensual and some women who they're working through their trauma and they need you to, to like beat them up during sex. I think because the beat me up during sex girl is such a vocal minority, particularly in rap and pop culture and porn, a lot of men will meet a woman who's soft and sensual and thinks she just wants him to beat it up. And she's like, oh my God, this hurts. So the only way I can have bad sex is if you don't listen to my body. Because my body's very honest about what it likes and what it doesn't like. It doesn't want to be beat up. So is that a yes, they are bad lovers? That they didn't because they didn't make you come? Because I didn't get that answer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, Connie Chung. Yes, like Lulu, I make it so clear for you that if you fail, you worked really hard at failing. Okay. You worked really hard. Part, did y'all did y'all's first orgasm, did y'all make it happen yourself or did a partner make it happen? My first orgasm was with a partner, but it was it was a team effort. It was collaborative. Ooh. Yeah. My yeah. first orgasm was with the toy. Ooh. Yeah, because and my partner woke up and got angry. <laughs> <laughs> wait, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, so that story. Uh, no, we, 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 you... he was not comfortable with his body, and he had weirdness around oral sex. So I, I have a rule: I will not date any man who is not comfortable with oral sex, um, receiving it or giving it, because it tells me that you have a block around intimacy that I am not getting paid to help you deal with, right? If you don't, if you're not gonna look it from the root to the tutor, just stay away from me. So him being weird about oral sex, I think it was like a religious thing, a cultural thing for him, means that there was a lot of like red tape and yellow tape and things I couldn't touch and things I couldn't do. It was just too much, it was too many restrictions. And so one night he went to sleep and I was like, fuck it. And I rubbed one out on my own and it was a great night. and. My psychic you things were. Next him or did you like going to he was sleeping. I thought he was sleeping. He woke up and got angry. <laughs> Do you think he had a purpose to be angry? Because wouldn't you be happy that I love you and I'm still gonna make up for what you like? Is that a reason? To this day, I think he was wrong for getting angry. But I've had men tell me if they woke up and found that girl finishing it off, they'd be upset. I, I know a lot of people. I think the anger probably stoked more from not you you necessarily finishing yourself. Just like why are you wake me up so we can fuck? Like we are did. Always horny. We did. Look no what you did. Yeah, but you know, he could have woke me up, so I could have, he could have redeemed himself. Maybe, it wasn't good, uh, Jeffrey. It wasn't good. I wanted uh, to have a good night. Oh, see, that's a whole different. Why you I loved him a lot, but he was, over. because I loved him and he, he was my first love. He was bad in bed. Mm -mm, you ain't love him. I was, I was like in my early <laughs> 20s and I was like, oh, I love him. He's really bad in bed, but I love him. And, and I've, I'm never saying that again. Cause I really do feel that. In the 30s, I still saying that. Oh, no, I feel that like good sex can be taught, right? Because to Lulu's point earlier, we're all very different. And if somebody fucks with you heavy and what they naturally do doesn't work what you naturally do, there is a reasonable amount of let's work on this together that you can do. Now, if you work on it together and he just ain't got it, at that point, we, we, you might have to tap out like Jeffrey. But I have met very few men who have, haven't been able to teach me what they like and vice versa. Yeah, I... Sex can be taught. Oh, I'm sorry. To a certain I point. Yeah. Well, I think it can be taught. And also what you like specifically, I think is like another thing is, is what you're probably teaching. Mm. And I was just first, cause I, I wasn't having orgasms at first. And I had a friend who was telling me, she was explaining to me how to do it. And so my boyfriend at the time, I was like, all right, we got to figure this out together. And he was very receptive to that. I think that a lot of men, they feel, you know, I know what I'm doing. 
I'm a man. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm a and man. So, but they really don't know what they're doing. And, but he was, he was so receptive and he was like, all right, well, yeah, let's try this. Let's do this. Like he was open to like what, what I was feeling. Like we were super involved. And that's why I said when I finally did it, it was with him and it was collaborative, it, but I appreciate him being so open and willing and like able to be a little vulnerable himself. Like, okay, I'm clearly not getting it done alone. So what, what we got to do. That's foreplay, by the way. That's yeah. foreplay. Like y'all were laughing when I mentioned like b- being able to psychically arouse myself, but I realized that there's certain levels of communication and emotional openness and like emotional investment that are arousing to all of us, whether we realize it or not. A man saying, I don't think I did my best last week. What, what, do, you, what do you need? That would actually make me already closer to, to an orgasm the next time. How many men are really going to say that? <laughs> Jeffrey, we were trying to hope. Most men Jeffrey's the hope like, killer. Jesus most Christ. Men not, most men are not submitting a feedback or comment card for suggestions. <laughs> Natasha, what is the most fragile thing on this planet? The most fragile thing. The male ego. Earth, the male ego. That thing is a Fabergé egg. It really is. <laughs> I don't even think it's Fabergé. I think I think it's meringue. I think you just blowing so, it, my girl. <laughs> listen, you any a man is not going to sit there after and be like, so how did I do? Not all men, but some. If you are willing to learn, and listen, I'm always a student, so I'm always learning. But no, Jeffrey, it's the advertisement. He's like, uh, unlike all the other niggas, I take feedback. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> I, 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 like, hey, I didn't have an orgasm. Do you think we could try something else? Would you be receptive? Look wow! At his face. Look at his face. Oh, Look at Jeffrey's you, face. Wow! I thought you said you said that to somebody. No, 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 no! I'm asking, like, if somebody said that to you. Uh, well, say it again. If they just say, "Hey, I didn't nut." Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd be like, "What you need? What? Do we, yeah, I'm fine." To be See? Like, yeah, yeah. But that, but that's telling me, like, I really there is a way to say it too, though, right? Like, I don't ever give feedback about the negative. I give the feedback about what I need. So I don't ever say, yeah. "Oh, you, your dick is trash." I say, "Hey, can you go a little softer?" Like, yeah. I think if you skip the trash part and go straight to what you want. It's easier for them to take feedback. Yeah. And it's also like a lot of people, um, they have watched porn. Um, and you know, that old saying, art imitates life. So a lot of times people see what they have, what's going on in porn, and they might emulate that on somebody thinking that's supposed Porn to sex isn't great. It's not that great. One, every vagina, every booty hole, every penis is created <laughs> differently. What work? Because then also, at the same time, it could have been a dude that slept with somebody. I'm, I'm for you ladies, a uh, guy that slept with a girl. And she loved his little pound town or jackrabbit or whatever he was doing. She absolutely loved it. And because she had a positive response and maybe orgasm in his mind, he's like, oh, this is my move. This is what yeah. blue, this is what Lou, this is what this girl, this girl. They just keep Meanwhile, she's it. working through demons through her vagina and I'm not. However, I think y'all might do it. But if nobody ever stops that person and does what Lutasha says, hey, I didn't orgasm. I don't like this to him. He's just going to keep on going around doing whatever he's doing, thinking that he's the man getting bad sex because nobody's giving feedback. Right. And so I blame, yeah. look, I blame y'all because y'all sending them out. No. Wild. <laughs> well, Spreading that little jackrabbit everywhere. <laughs> y'all no, <laughs> men are va- men can be really crazy and violent when they get bad feedback. You said that the, the male ego is fragile, and that's true. That It also means that we're also unsafe sometimes. So a lot of times we don't speak up, not because they're scared because they don't have the language, it's because they're scared of the reaction. Yeah, they're scared that there'll be retaliation because, like you said, the male ego is fragile. And some guys, you'll give them feedback in bed, they'll pretend it's good, and then they'll get back at you. And now you're like, damn, I feel unsafe because I had the audacity to tell him what I need. Honestly, I love it when men are super attentive before sex because it tells you how they're going to be during sex. A lot of times, men who act like they have good home training that translates into the bedroom. We all yeah. said it's it's dancing. It's not dancing. It's home training. I'm, I think it can dance and still be selfish in bed. If you are helping me clean the dishes after I made you an amazing meal and you're handing me a towel when you think I'm going, like, I start to realize, oh, you're attentive. That means that the probability of us figuring it out is very high. Yeah. If I can't tell you shit, I already know I'm screwed. I am (laughs) screwed. (laughs) Uh, About about the word uh, submission. (laughs) Yeah, uh, not the good way. I'm bad screwed. I want to bring it back to submission because we were talking about the definitions. And did you guys give your definitions of submission? No. I was actually looking it up because I was like, what is the definition? What did Miriam Webster say? So according to um, Webster, hold on a second. Miriam didn't show up, just Webster. It says, ready to conform to an authority or will of others, meekly obedient or passive. Sounds like role play to me. Um, it sounds like BD- BDSM. We we do so believe in like the kink it, community. That term only comes into my relationships when it's in the bedroom. Like, 
on a day day to day basis. I don't want. I'm not submitting. I don't want you to be submissive. Like you just. No. I have a maybe pop unpopular opinion about what the word submission looks like in action. I feel that biblically speaking, the word submission has been weaponized, and that's why so many women are scared of it because biblically, it's how men have abused them using uh, dogma, right? Like, oh, the Bible said that I'm the head and you the neck, all, all, all that other stuff. So I get why women in particular are scared of the word submit because submission has been weaponized against them. I will say in action, though, this is an asterisk. I think that when a man is protecting me and I'm making sure that I feel safe during a moment where things are scary or overwhelming, in that moment, I am submitting to him. And I think that when a woman's being super nurturing and being that matriarch and being the person who he feels like he can cry to and talk to in ways that he can't talk to anybody else, I think he's submitting too. And I think that when men are, masculine energy is being protective and feminine energy is being nurturing. Both of those things require submission. And so that there is a natural, healthy version of submission that we often don't clock because the more biblical version is the one that we talk about the most. And so I wouldn't mind submitting to someone who makes me feel safe. I wouldn't mind having my man submit to me when I'm being nurturing and he he needs to sit the fuck down and let me take care of him. So that version of submission that we don't talk about is the kind that I actually find really sexy, but it doesn't get talked about enough because of the weaponized version. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Like I hear submission and, and I don't automatically wince just because I know there's a version of it that I've had that's been really healthy that doesn't get talked about a lot. Jeffrey, you are constantly nurturing people. No, I'm just like, I would never see, I would never use the word submit for either one of you ladies. Like, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Listen. He's like, these Ron. bitches are trying to kill me. <laughs> but I love, I, <laughs> like, Sasha, you I'm fighting for my life. Choco. <laughs> I'm like, Sasha, girl, we love LeBron, but we know who running things over there. <laughs> no, but, I, but, but I saw, I saw there was a moment where LeBron was being really, really sweet. We're talking about my birthday weekend, guys. We, we went to wine country and we were all in this house. I got a house that was way too big. I, I needed more people to fill it up. And I met LeBron for the first time and we were at some restaurant and he was being so chivalrous and making sure you were okay and everybody was okay. And Lulu just looked at him like with all these stars in her eyes. And she's like, why didn't you try to get at me sooner? In that <laughs> moment, it felt very like soft beta submission energy. Like, oh my God, my man oh, got Natasha? me. Yes, like she looked at him with stars in her eyes. I'm being serious. I saw my own name eyes. Jeffrey had like, you were too busy eating the food, the pasta. Right. So, <laughs> your inner fat girl was back. But like, I saw it, like she got all soft. And mind you, when a strong woman gets soft, it might be harder for everybody else to notice it. But as someone who's a strong woman, I know what it looks like when I do it. It's not theatrical like the damsels. It's more of like, her shoulders relax and her body relaxes. And she's like, you can tell she's not on alert because he got it. I and I like that she can do that. Shoulders. I love you saying her shoulders relax because we you know how we feel about niggas without no shoulders. <laughs> you can't stand niggas with no shoulders, man. <laughs> yeah, a, a man with sloped shoulders and big hips makes me feel like I'm Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, we're, we're, not, we're not, I'm not shaming them. I feel bad for saying that out loud. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but it's true. And I like, Stop I was about sub submission I feel like most people who know me would not think that I would be submissive or anything like that but it's just like with when you're with somebody who does make you feel safe you mm -hmm. can relax like and just be like all right I'm good I'm safe like everything's fine it's cool like and it's easy and that, that's why like when these podcast niggas be like you need to submit da, 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 da. I'm like you a pussy like that's why I can't submit to you because I Ooh. feel like I'm beat your ass like <laughs> And she probably could. She probably no. I I, I love that you said that a strong woman needs someone who makes her feel safe enough to relax. Yeah, you screaming, relax is not going to relax me, sir. I'm stressed hey. now because you're yelling at me, and I'm not about to follow you off a, a cliff. Like you, you making bad decisions. I need to be in charge because you're doing dumb stuff. Yeah, you're gonna get, get us killed. <laughs> I I don't believe in the ride or die thing because I'm like, why do I have to ride and why do I have to die? Like, I would like to live and maybe take my own Uber. Like, I, I'm not for the ride or die. Have you ever been out with me, Tasha? <laughs> <laughs> Tasha <laughs> might get you killed or locked up. <laughs> That's true, Lulu. You are a little a little ticky ticky boom. No, no, I think about it. <laughs> I have not been that way in really a really long time, Jeff. What are you talking about? <laughs> What's a really long time? A week? Seven days? Ten days? Like ten years, I feel like. Oh no, no, come on, Lulu, come on. I met you. I met you like two years ago. What is the last time I did something crazy? Where were you? Were you just in Guatemala? You and Randy and Brandy 
and y'all sent Polaroid home because y'all was out there, and he's worried that he might have to defend y'all. Yes, we can, we can do this ourselves. We can beat people up ourselves. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey just told me that was a very specific example, friend. That sounds racist. <laughs> I, 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 I was doing anything crazy. We did not get arrested. I did not get Ooh. any fight. Lulu, Everything you stuttered. You stuttered. You're like, I was, I was doing nothing crazy. <laughs> did I get arrested? If did I get arrested as your argument, you were doing something crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but did you die? Did you right. die? <laughs> Lulu, I was on your side. You're making Jeffrey right. I haven't done anything. I've been normal. Okay, well, speaking of uh, uh, denial, uh, Lulu should have started. <laughs> that's a great segue. <laughs> I'm just going to jump right into it. Speaking of denial, <laughs> that's exactly what the fuck I just saw. Uh, Lulu shared a really interesting story with me. Um, we've changed the names to protect them, but not very well, though. Uh, Lulu is telling me the story of her friend, Miffany. <laughs> Let's just make up a whole different name. No, that is the name we made up. Her, 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 the name we made up is Miffany. Okay. I, I feel like you can guess what her real name is. I, that's why I'm like, if her name is actually what I think it is, let's just call her Beth. Call her Beth. Like, not even close. No, it's the story of Miffany. Friends because of this show now. So <laughs> I was hung over and she went with it. She's like, no, I like Miffany. I was like, I didn't try very hard. So <laughs> Lulu, can you share what you told me about the story of Miffany? Because I'm completely overwhelmed and intrigued by this narrative. You, I feel like you should tell the story because I'm like, what parts were you intrigued? I said a lot of things. <laughs> she did. She's like, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to save my friendship with Miffany, bitch. Okay. Um, what she told me was she had a beautiful friend named Miffany. Asterix. Miffany is beautiful. Conventionally speaking, she's attractive. She's healthy. She's a boss ass bitch. She's a titan of industry. She gets the job done. Miffany is with a, an amazing man and she talks to him crazy. <laughs> and she talks to him you are going to jail Miffany and she, she talks to this man crazy and every time she talks to this man people hold their breath children are being told to look away don't stare into the sun it's very devastating and he's chilling he don't mind it he don't mind that Miffany talks to him like I eat the cake anyway and when he's been questioned about it he has said well Miff Miffany can't emasculate me I'm a man and so the conversation was here is this uh, arguably verbally abusive boss ass bitch who was allowed to be her full alpha self because she's a man who is so, so uh, confident in his masculinity. There's nothing she can do outside of growing a penis and a beard to emasculate him. And we had the conversation around how that example illustrates where a lot of people get lost in the sauce, right? Because the first thing is, Miffany, please talk nicely to that man, right? You don't have to be verbally abusive just because you're an alpha. And also though, no matter how verbally abusive somebody is, can you really emasculate a confident man? And that's the conversation that we wanted to have. Lulu, did I tell that correctly? Yes. Okay. That was like, like Stockholm Syndrome to me. Oh, snap. Wait. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. F, <laughs> that's just... F, do you think you that men can be emasculated by women? If, if they're hyper-confident. Do you think a, a confident man can actually be if emasculated? They are hyper-confident. Can they be emasculated? Um, Securing the I masculinity, think... I mean. Securing the masculinity. Oh uh, yeah, um, yeah. Because me, it just sound like he just don't care. Like he's just like, this is who she is. I know what I signed up for. This is who she is. Like, is she fine and rich? What's some of? The so he's a submissive bread loser. Oh, is that what not a is? bread loser. I, I don't. <laughs> I think no. he gonna call you. We should have called her back. I mean, listen, <laughs> oh if, if she is doing all of this, I'm assuming she's the one footing the bill. And so, in that case, he is. Like, I'm gonna shut my black ass up. <laughs> <laughs> His life is very nice. <laughs> so nice. these niggas don't want to work <laughs> i thought it was because miffany was beautiful and successful but you're saying well shit she pays the bill like is is he the breadwinner he is not but he does oh. work oh Lulu. <laughs> and works <laughs> because he just needs something to do or works because he is contributing to their like contributing to their household or something i think he's absolutely contributing back he's not like the type of guy i think would could, could just sit like at the house like you know what i mean like he's still like a not me <laughs> not you i think sure. i think what jeffrey's saying is though is it necessary for him to 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 he doesn't have to he didn't he doesn't have to that's how much money she makes i think ugly. no no they're both fine so so i think jeffrey jeffrey, might have, jeffrey in your your warped mind i think he might have cracked it i thought it was because she had pretty privilege you're saying no the bitch is fine and rich Maybe it's easier to let a woman be a boss bitch when the, the mortgage is always paid on time. He works too. He's not just sitting at the house eating mama. <laughs> he but works for, for like, fun. 
<laughs> like it, it's he working because he absolutely has to? Or is it just because like because you know most most people, not even just men, most people that soft life it does sound good until you get a little bored and then you want to do an activity you want to do like just do something i feel like he would 1000 percent be bored if he was home all the time yeah but. she's saying that he's working as a hobby like he's as a hobby, yeah yeah damn i didn't take that part jeffrey you cracked the code i was like maybe mickey's getting away with it because she's just so beautiful that's the only reason you talking to me crazy <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the only reason you're talking to me crazy. Like, so it costs money to talk to people crazy. She can absolutely. afford to talk big shit. And everybody has a price. I don't care what nobody says. Everybody has a price. I don't think. I think. I think no matter how much my partner made, I would probably still tell them to suck my dick a little bit. Like I, I might still cuss them out. I probably would too. Yeah, I think. I think I'm a little too feisty. And Jeffrey, you you talk like that, that talk. I've seen you, friend. When you black right. out, <laughs> you lying to yourself. Speaking of the Lulu, Je if Jeffrey. Sorry, Jeffrey Smith Jr. thinks that he's submissive. My price has never been met. That's why. Jeffrey, I, <laughs> God himself could say the sky is orange. You're like, God, you sure about that? Like, I don't, I, I think you're <laughs> underestimating. And when you do it, you can tell you cannot help it. Mm. You're like, no, I don't agree with that. I do, I do. I got too, I know I have too much mouth. But again, also, I have never been in an unlimited wealth situation where it's like, I'm going to shut my ass up. But your price is unlimited wealth. That's your price? Okay, of course you never met that. Unlimited wealth, Jeffrey? Listen, it's got to be in the somewhere 30 millions or higher. Oh, heavens. I, can, I will shut up. I will be your verbal punching bag. All you need. Jeffrey, no. No. But he wasn't cute. You would still date him? 30 plus million dollars. Jeffrey, you are shallow. Yes. You you would not let a ugly no you would not let an ugly man talk to you crazy. I, you, Jeff. I really Jeffrey, don't. Jeffrey, we know you. I know you have this dream. We've okay. met you. Okay. Go find You're me an ugly nigga with thirty something million dollars that I have access to. <laughs> Y'all invited to the wedding tomorrow. <laughs> Jeffrey, no. Oh my God. These are lies. <laughs> These are lies. You guys, I want you guys to know that this is the Jeffrey after a traumatic breakup. We know Jeffrey 1.0. He's a sweet man. Okay. This for the streets thing. We're gonna let him have about another six months of this before we have an intervention. <laughs> this is supposed to be somebody's husband. You see what happens when you mess up a good man? This is and this is I what can, happens. I can be I can be anybody's husband for the right price. Oh my heavens. Jeffrey, this is not your OnlyFans ad. Okay, we need to <laughs> <laughs> he's like for the right for thirty nine ninety nine million a month. You I too. Have, listen, I have. What, what would you guys call dating down then? Because we're talking now about people who are willing to compromise their standards for things like money and affluence and access. What would you consider dating down, like dating beneath you? Stupid. You know, sure? Wait a minute. We just had a clip that damn thing went viral about you talking about you never had anybody big, big, big and fine and dumb. Yeah, and no, now you're saying nice. that. That wasn't fun. I ain't never dated. I've never committed, been in a relationship with nobody that was big, fine, and dumb. Ah, so big, fine, and dumb is only for the night, not for dating. Yeah, big, fine, and dumb is for the night. No, you're right. You I'm can't date anybody stupid. Dumb. No, Jeffrey, you make fun of the stupid people. I've seen it. You do it, and you and, and it's so funny to you, and you do it to their face, Jeffrey. I've and watched. See, and you don't like real ugly people either. Yeah, yeah when, see, when, they, Jeffrey, when people are ugly, you 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 growl. I have not met real ugly with 30 million plus dollars. Jeffrey, I think you're underestimating how shallow and spicy you are. If there's no way you would date an ugly man. I don't The care first how argument, you're like, I know your ugly ass not talking. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the first argument. Jeffrey, <laughs> I know his ugly ass and not yelling in my face, bitch. Somebody call the car service, okay? Get my mink. I am going to the chalet because this right. nigga got me fucked up. <laughs> Jeffrey, come on, bro. We know you. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, like, <laughs> yes, again, y'all know me, but y'all know I have never met and dated anybody with that much unlimited wealth in their bank account. So I, I agree. Um, I agree with y'all wholeheartedly mm -hmm. until those digits change. I, I have been dating on a in the a sliding past, scale. A sliding scale. You know, I was dating for love. You know, love they get you all clouded and fucked up. Uh. -uh. Mm -hmm. you know, let me see. Let me see that. Let me see that bank account. Oh, Jeffrey. Oh, I can't wait for his wedding so we can play this back. Like, see how I used to be before we got you that therapy. <laughs> it, depends, <laughs> so, it depends. Will the wedding be because I fell in love again, or will it be because I have access to unlimited amounts of money? It'll probably be because you fell in love with a good person who makes decent money Damn, and you won't have to worry. Put that in the atmosphere. I know you, Jeffrey. It's what's going to happen. We I all see it going. let that go. This is like the second act of a Netflix movie. Like, we all know how this ends, right? <laughs> the, the bitter, jaded, pretty homosexual ends up with this <laughs> fine-ass titan of industry. I'm telling you, I see it. Be like, girl, he got good credit and I love him. <laughs> I see it, Jeffrey. We, Lulu sees it, too. So Jeffrey is stupid. He cannot be with anybody stupid because that mouth. 
that mouth. How about you, Lulu? What is, what is dating down for you? I feel like probably dating somebody short. Damn. <laughs> Wait a minute. I call this episode problematic as fuck because everything. <laughs> I love Natasha. <laughs> Wait a minute, we just had an intervention for Jeffrey for being shallow, and your response was, I can't date nobody short. And what a short to you, Lulu. And that's the exact answer I would have given if I was speaking for Latasha. <laughs> anybody short. <laughs> Damn, problematic AF. Go ahead. I'm tall, though. Like, I hate when I, girls be like 5'3", and they be like, I don't need nobody under six feet tall. Like, girl, you could be date somebody 5'10", and he's seven inches taller than you. Seven inches? What's short to you, though, Lulu? What's short to you? I would, I would love to not go under 6'2". I will bring it down to, like... Wow! 6'2 six six is the bottom of your dating height. I Well, six feet is really the bottom, but I'm 5'10". Okay. Like, I am I am tall. Like, I am a tall woman. So it's different than, like, these girls be little asking for this. I'm going to have heels on, and then I'm going to be taller than you. Now what? And that makes men feel more uncomfortable than it does make women. Just, just for the record. I'll never it forget... Does. Cause like on these dating apps, the men, they, they hate when you ask their height. And so I stopped asking. And then I met, met this guy out on a day who said he was six foot. He was five ten, and I had heels on. So I'm six <gasps> one. So he was, he was visibly uncomfortable. So like, there are tons of short men who don't mind dating taller women, but I'm like, I just want you to manage your expectations as well. Because if you think I'm about to walk in here, I'm about to be five, six, that is not the case. So like yeah. I am like a tall, like a tall person. Like I feel like six foot is extremely reasonable. That's only two inches taller than me. It's, it's also like three oh, percent of the population though. Five nine. <laughs> five nine with unlimited wealth. Would that change it a little bit? Probably Damn. not. And and really? shorter. I'll talk to tell you, you ain't never got to work again a day in your life. I no. think I would get I think I would get irritated after a while. Like, cause after a while, even the you money like because you're short. Bro, nigga. Take She's like, look at your little ass down there. Who, who you talking to down there? I can see it. Right. You and Lulu would both, I think. I think, actually, let me be honest. I think all three of us got that mouth. We would all snap on some dumb shit if you got us mad. So I think it's yeah. dangerous for all of us. Get your ass out of here. I, I, see? <laughs> wow. I did it somebody who was 5'5", five, five, and I never mentioned his height. You never mentioned, like... My daddy was 5'5". Five, five. No, 5'4". Five, and I, yeah, I know. My mom was five six. So my dad was five five. No, five four. My mom was five six because she was two inches taller. I'm five eight and a half. It's because my grandma was six feet. Um, it's so interesting because I've I've always said that five ten is to me what tall begins. So because I, I'm I'm an inch and a half tall shorter than Lulu, I don't five consider myself real height. for women. I'm talking about yes, five ten is not a real height for men. All men who say that five ten are really five eight. Um, but like. Because I always thought 5'10 was tall, I'm like, oh, I'm a, an inch and a half shorter than tall, so I can still be with the short guy. If I was Lulu's height, if I, if I had those extra two inches, Lulu, I might feel the same way. Um, I do think for me, my shortest right now is probably six feet because short men are just mean to me. Um, <laughs> you, be, you be nipping at your heels and getting all mad, and I'm just like, oh, I want to say something. So that's... <laughs> No, I've dated a lot of just mean little men. And I'm just like, mm, this is not hitting. It's just, it's just, it's the, just the seven yeah. doors. <laughs> like, what do you mean a bunch of mean little men? <laughs> no, I'm being so serious. I am the kind of person. Sleepy and dopey and angry <laughs> and <laughs> miserable and irritated. And <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. The two things that most women get yelled at for doing that I prided myself on not doing, I now do because men have talked me out of it. Women always get um, chided for not wanting to date short men or broke men. I've done both and I was very open-minded. They were mean. Broke men can be very mean. Short men who have a, a complex can be very mean. So it wasn't about me judging them. They were so busy judging themselves and projecting it onto me that I couldn't even be open-minded. So for me, it's not that I can't, I don't want a short man or a broke man who is working on himself. It's that y'all not nice. And and that's a real You're thing. You're not nice. I was talking to one of my they friends about that. Dinner that night, Blue. They might not have been able to eat. They broke. Well, if you're hangry all the time, then maybe get you a job. <laughs> like, yeah, no. Short men and 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 broke men have been very mean to me. I need somebody who likes himself enough not to be an asshole to me. So that's why I don't date short or broke men anymore. It's not because of the and money or the height. Like, them get resentful when you make more money than them too. So like, yeah. that's why what is that? That's a, we need to invite a guest on here to speak on that. Like, why do? Men get angry. Because I told y'all about the example of the first date in the car that me and our other friend Jessica, we were uh, polling people on. What is it about powerful, strong, successful, I feel, women that intimidates men so much? It's supposed I, I to. Really... No, it's supposed to. It's by design. 
But why? Because currency, right? Women are told that we're supposed to be fertile, beautiful, and submissive and create a, a space of peace for men. Men are supposed to be rich, successful, powerful protectors with big dicks. This so anytime that... No, misogyny created those rules. So it's, it's not even Scooby-Doo history. Like I'm supposed to be as close to skinny and white and docile as possible. You're supposed to be as close to rich and white and big dick and powerful as possible. And any disparity from those two really flattening metrics makes you feel resentful. So men are told that your value is your money. That's why they're told that they're not allowed to have feelings. Your value is providing. Your value is protecting. Your value is being hypermasculine. So if you cannot do that, if you can't build a house with your bare hands with your 10-inch penis and be rich as hell, something's wrong with you. So when you meet a woman who is actually doing the thing on your list better than you are, of course you're going to resent it. But you were supposed to be pretty. What do you mean you can out-earn me and you can build your own Ikea furniture? How dare you? If you can remove something off of my list, that's a relief. Like, that's teamwork. We are You're verse, Jeffrey. You are verse. You are verse. You are verse and you are not dating women. Listen. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, but no, that's why I said, honestly, like, I really would love if we can find somebody who is open enough to admit that that is something. Lulu's that brother's coming them. on, Lulu. Isn't that right? We're going to try to get your brother to come on, the tall, the successful doctor. doctor. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to be in studio for that, Latasha. Yeah, we're, we're going to be in studio for that. We're trying to get him to come for the January 8th episode. Okay. I, um, Jeffrey, are you blushing, yes, sir? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, why is everybody trying to get your brother's cookies? Am I the only one who hasn't met him yet? And I thought he lived out of state. I was like, Lulu, are we gonna have to fly him in? She's like, girl, he live in Culver City. I'll be cooking that episode. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna make eye contact with your brother because apparently I'm the only person in your, in your friend group who hasn't met him and doesn't want to climb his leg. Okay, good to know. <laughs> have you talked to him about being on the show? I did. And so I was like, oh, come on my podcast. He was like, you have a podcast now? I was like, <laughs> well, that's, oh, that's his voice? You got that deep voice? <laughs> yes. Jeffrey, is that what he sound like for real? <laughs> yeah. Like, Jeffrey is blushing. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, I need you to behave. Yeah, saying, <laughs> he does not talk to many people. He does have conversation with me whenever uh, Latasha has him around. So, you know. Why are you blushing, friend? <laughs> Am I blushing? Your response was, I'm not many have heard his voice, but I have. <laughs> <laughs> that was your answer. I, that's not what I asked you. That wasn't even the question. Is that, is, is that me being submissive? Is, see? <laughs> Look at that. You're being, what did we, we just illustrate a point. If you are <laughs> tall and masculine and successful, even Jeffrey's ass Ooh. will submit to you. <laughs> yeah, you're you're sub, you're now a submissive bread baker. You see that? We have now <laughs> lost our guest because he is what? Not, he's no. Not, okay, Lulu, Lulu, don't let him see this episode. This no. episode didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. It's Thanksgiving week. You just gonna see him and give him the stuff and this stuff. And be like, yeah, come on my podcast. You guys, please write in the comments if you want Latasha's brother to join us for our New Year's episode on, that we're taping on January eighth. We're hoping that the the spirit of the following will help us convince him. Lulu, on a scale of one to ten, how receptive did he seem? He didn't even really, because we were texting and he was just like, what do you, I didn't even know this was a thing. So, oh. um, I don't, I think he'll do it. Like, I feel like he will. I feel like he will too. He's your brother and he loves you and I haven't met him yet. Yes. He's, yeah. You look like you have a fine brother though. You look like it. <laughs> I promise you all the women in the audience are like. She looked like she'd have a fine brother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jeffrey, fix your face, Jeffrey. I have never seen Jeffrey this smiley. I can see the teeth all the way in the back of his mouth. God damn. To say, but I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna reserve my comments. Have your friends ever tried to sleep with their brother, Lulu? <laughs> damn, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey's like the friend is me. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So your your brother is a successful heterosexual, tall, attractive black male doctor. Doctor. Yes. Living in California. Yes. Indeed. And he does he date black women? He does. Who? <gasps> Exclusively too. Exclusive? Mm hmm I remember one time. Wow. I asked him because my mom was like saying that if he married a white woman, it would be my fault. I don't understand how that, that works, but <laughs> Wait, that's what? how dynamic works. <laughs> and so I asked him because I was like, I don't want any more spoilers. I don't want surprises. If you like white women, can you just tell me now so I could just like prepare myself mentally and he was like oh no i hate white people oh wow okay well to okay. the white audience we to the white audience to the white audience she, lulu damn we we can talk to you about like media hey, training <laughs> no, no what she meant was for procreation he wants to keep it within his community because he yes. comes from a strong black family 
of two black parents and he's seen that archetype be upheld in a way that normally isn't and he wants to continue the family tradition isn't that what you meant Lulu that is absolutely what I meant mm -hmm. oh lord him, him being <laughs> like he's always off there are four of us and like three of us went to HBCUs he's the only one who did not go he went to Stanford and so he says that being, you know, going to school with white people and being in these environments, they're always like, oh, do you play basketball? Are you on the football team? Is that why you're here? And he was like, no, I'm smart. Uh, that makes sense. So he really, okay. So uh, she also threw in Stanford guys. So, so far, if you're keeping tally, he's a uh, tall, successful a doctor, a black man who actually likes black men living in California. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he went with Issa Rae. Oh, and he went to school with Issa. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get my makeup done that episode. Jeffrey, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like me and Jeffrey are going to have our titties out. <laughs> the comments gonna be like, you know, you need to you gave me them uh, them rollers. We finna have this uh, little twist out going. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 gonna be wearing a V neck for that episode, y'all. Don't say shit when it I think Jeffrey might be wearing a V neck as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this is the shirtless episode, right? Yeah, this oh, okay. is <laughs> this is the titties out episode of Human Eyes. Welcome. Oh, how God. tall is he? He's six three. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's... <laughs> Blue guy's like, wow. <laughs> I told you, I'm tired of the short, mean ones. They're so mean. <laughs> you know what's yeah. like having a little man yelling up at you? It is very disconcerting. All, all I see yeah. is that uh, that that leprechaun from that movie, the horror movie's leprechaun. Yeah, <laughs> angry. <laughs> just they're mean. so. It's like it's like fire, like fire ants. Like it's just so angry. And mind you, I couldn't say none of that because I'm like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. But he looks so angry and tiny. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next topic, which is how misogyny hurts men. Because the whole thing about submissive breadwinners was Lulu mentioning that when we move in a way where we want women to be um, not gold diggers, because if you're a gold digger, then even though I have no gold to be dug, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> and also, I've never understood people, people with like twenty dollars in their account saying, "I don't want a gold digger." Where's the gold to be dug, friend? That's not how that works. <laughs> there has to be gold for me to dig. Like it's just <laughs> science, right? So you don't want a woman who is a gold digger because then that is somebody who's using you, and you're worth more than that. But you don't also don't want a woman who makes more than you because then now you feel emasculated. So I d I do think the conversation around submissive breadwinners is a, a lose lose situation for women, and I also want to talk about how misogyny in general is a lose-lose situation for men. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about at James's birthday was how a lot of men who are depressed, who are told that they cannot talk about their feelings because they're told that lie that they're only logical. Men are not only logical, that they're people. They often have it manifest through something called erectile dysfunction. And that was the topic that we were talking about. Look at look at Jeffrey's face. Jeffrey's like, wait. I missed that. I was cooking. <laughs> you were cooking so during I, the party. You missed, missed that, that part. <laughs> we, we were talking about ED and how a lot of, as me, as the resident cougar, um, on the panel, um, a lot of the boys in their early 30s, their dicks are getting tired early. And Lulu was mentioning how her partner, who is an established grown man, had said that a lot of men don't realize that the way that they don't take care of themselves, including their physical and mental health, actually does have an impact on their their function of their penises. Lulu, you want to talk on behalf of strong black men? <laughs> on behalf of Master Splinter. <laughs> on behalf of Master Splinter, her boyfriend, yes. What did Master Splinter tell you? <laughs> um, I can't wait yeah, to like... come on. <laughs> Because he, you know, he's OD, like he doesn't drink, smoke, anything like that. But all of that stuff, especially if you're doing it for years, decades, even like mm -hmm. it, it's going to affect like, like anything else, not having a, a stomach, not exercising, not getting enough steps in, like you just sitting there, you just drunk and high all the time. Of course, like it's, it's gonna, it's not gonna work anymore. You know, I didn't know, realize how rampant it was. Like we were talking to the girlies at the. <laughs> it's rampant. <laughs> You're 33. How's your dick already tired? You're 33. Because they're doing all the drugs in the alphabet. Not saying the people y'all were talking to were. I'm just saying like. They might. They might have. Like it's, it's a thing. And I, I was talking to another friend who was not even there for that conversation. And she was telling me the same thing. Like she was dating this guy. He was like 35 and his shit wasn't working. Like it's, it's that's alarming. Jeffrey, what do you think about that? Has that hit your community yet? It's hit every community. It's hit all of them again. I, really? I personally think it's the drugs. I mean, of course, like you said, Lou, definitely unhealthy, you know, smoking, drinking. And depression, and not, guys. Depression will make well, your yeah, penis yeah, soft. Your yeah. mental, absolutely, definitely. Yeah. Um, maybe you can't drink enough water, you know, getting a little bit of exercise and stuff like that. Yeah. And again, the drugs. <laughs> it's the drugs. Well, I mean, hard drugs, you mean, right? Because weed makes, okay. 
I just I just want to make sure that there were distinction between uh, hard, soft, and all the other stuff because uh, I've had some great coitus on marijuana, legally obtained marijuana, <laughs> and I just want to make sure that we're not included because a lot of black folks still really think that marijuana is crack. Like they still haven't been let free by the the clenches of Nancy Reagan and her her propaganda. So I need y'all to know that marijuana is considered a soft drug. Um, <laughs> it is not the same thing as cocaine. You know what I mean? I can go into a store and buy that and a candy bar legally in LA. So it's not. The same thing but no i do think anybody using anything at an excess or a lack of balance in general because even though we we did a soft drug i do know people who have stopped smoking weed because they were using it too much same thing with food right food is good for you but if you overeat now you're sick so i do right. think the lack of balance is a problem uh i also want to ask you guys a question about and this is oh, i don't know how to say this Lou and I talked about this during our call yesterday because we were really trying to make sure that the submissive breadwinner conversation talked about all the ways that the men who asked for that shoot themselves in the foot. Um, and I mentioned to her how there's all these studies that say when women get more successful, the more successful and the smarter a woman is, the less likely she is to be a wife. Um, and it's like if your IQ is over 130, if you make six figures, your probability of being a wife goes down to like single digits, right? They always have a study to tell me I'm going to die alone. It's bullshit. <laughs> One of the things that I did notice, though, a lot of my homegirls, when they're highly successful and glowing up, they suddenly end up pregnant. And so we started talking about this phenom that quietly happens of men who passive aggressively knock up their girlfriends. To keep them <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love oh, that. Like, <laughs> like, 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 bitch, you got a raise. Come here. Come here. I want to okay, show the club. Right. And I've seen it happen a lot it, where. Uh... I mean, even if you look at Cardi in them, right? People are like, why is it all these women, like when they're about to like, some shit gets big. I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose, but like Rihanna became a billionaire and was knocked five minutes later. Like there's this thing that keeps happening where women will be at, like at the height of their career and then pop up pregnant. And I have had men tell me that they did it on purpose. I've had a couple of guys confess this to me as friends on the low. What do you guys think about uh, people being impregnated as control? And I know this is team fuck, fuck them kids, so I can already guess where this is going. It go back to that uh soft life. Again, niggas want to be just as comfortable nowadays as women do. That's why you see, even with these celebrities, uh, Lou, we talk about, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Halle Berry, you know, she had to pay uh, spousal support. You know, you have all these women now having to pay spousal support to they men when they divorce now because they're more successful. Nobody wants to work. Now, everybody want to be comfortable and get it the easiest and fastest way that they can. That's sad. <laughs> You guys, that is so sad. That makes me want to log off. Like, so you, so you saying all the boys want to be bad bitches, all the bad bitches want to be uh, um, uh, misogynist men, and and what's left for us guys? The women want to emasculate them. <laughs> the thoughts don't of Jeffrey Smith Jr. I can and tell say, you guys that. You what happened, love? Can. I said, don't body slam your boyfriend. They don't like that. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay, You're Lulu, not going I, down that rabbit hole, Natasha. I'm not doing that with you today. Lulu, you body slammed a man and he felt emasculated. <laughs> wow. Lulu, why did you body slam a grown man who was having sex with you? It was an accident. No, no, Lulu. I've seen body slams. That's a very intentional act. <laughs> See, okay, so you're the Jeffrey of this episode. This is going off the rails. I thought we're gonna be sisters in arms, Jeffrey. You were not, you were not. Lulu, how do you accidentally body slam a grown ass man? You know how like you play fight with guys mm -hmm. stuff like that, and so I usually I usually I usually give up and then we have sex. Like I I don't body slam. I'm like, oh no, you got me. <laughs> That's how I I, fight. I thought he was gonna stop me, and so he just. He so you're, you're you're victim blaming that he wasn't strong enough <laughs> to stop you from body slamming. <laughs> Who I'm happy you found the right one. Cause like I have brothers and they're both huge and cousins and stuff like that. So like I'm used to losing. So you were going full force trying to beat up a man and you won accidentally. Yes. He wasn't even going full force. <laughs> oh, wow. Was he was he a tender man? Was he was he slim built? What, what, what was the situation? He was a slim built man. But Laurent told me he tried to make me feel better about it. He was like, I mean, anybody could get dropped. Like he was like, I've been dropped by guys. Could, could, could you drop Laurent, Master Splendor? Could you drop him? No. We all know that you could not drop that man. <laughs> too. It was more the embarrassment of the other person that was there because we had this one friend. Wait, wait, you did it in public? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Pause, 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 pause the show. Pause the show. Pause the show. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Lulu, I thought you were having a tender moment with your man one on one. You body slammed your boyfriend in public in front of witnesses. In particular, use, one. No, Lulu, Lulu, use words. It's an audio broadcast, Lulu. Is that a yes? <laughs> yes. It was an accident. 
No, Lulu, that's not. Jeffrey, explain what happened. It was what I was not there. However, the one witness that was there. Oh, she ain't gonna never not bring that shit up in front of your face. <laughs> like, wow. I, I would have broken up with Lutasha if she did that to me. as a friend. <laughs> we can't be friends no more because you did it in front of her. And you know, you know <laughs> exactly who I'm talking about. Was it Brandy? Oh, I wasn't trying to say no names. Oh, no, we love Brandy. We give her shout outs all the time. We love her. Maybe I'm gonna tell you. Brandy. <laughs> we need Brandy on the show. You. We oh, need absolutely. Brandy on the show. Absolutely. That's gonna be chaos. Oh, I yeah, we have to do that. It has to be in studio as well. Brandy has to be in studio with some drinks. So you body slammed a man in front of your girl home girl who's not checking for these dudes. So that she could have more fun. Okay, well, I mean Lulu, do you have any thoughts now in retrospect? Would you have done that anything differently? Um, yeah, I definitely would not have done it. I think that it's not even like he's like weak or whatever. I think I surprised him by how strong I am. And I think like a lot of times when men are, you know, tussling with women, it's like not even close. So he probably was just like, oh, da, 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 da. and then like I who normally lose, I'm like, well, I'm trying. Like, what the fuck? I'm an athlete. Like, I'm trying to win. <laughs> she gave old Undertaker suplex. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, it's so interesting when I hear about Lulu's. Have you ever uh, seen a grown man get sweeped off his feet? <laughs> no, no. I would. I'm wondering if I would still find him sexually attractive after that. Lulu. Oh, she went somewhere. Come back, Lulu. <laughs> no, I'm kind of. Damn, that was the answer, friend. That was a long part of your life. Uh, I don't know. Like if. Yeah, he don't ever tell him you're doing a podcast. Don't ever tell him that you're doing a podcast. Him or Miffany. Okay. Those two people <laughs> need to never see this episode. This episode might have to go be behind our Patreon. <laughs> I might have to do a commercial like, y'all want to see an episode called Titties and Dick? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I, I I think it's brave of you to be honest now that you recognize that that might have felt emasculating. Um, I'm still not sure about the word emasculating itself, like if that's a real thing or if it's just something that people project. Um, I do appreciate that, Lulu, you mentioned that your dad was old school and that because he's old school, but also very logical, that he's unintentionally evolved into being less misogynistic just based on logic. And I love when you when we were talking about that, because I was like, logic really will help you think your way out of a lot of misogynistic things because they're just not logical. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you unpack how you realize your dad was evolving unbeknownst to him? Tell me the story, because I was drunk when I said when I told it, because I don't remember. <laughs> By the way, we're gonna do a fertility episode that, that, that Lulu pitched, and and it's gonna be called Jeffrey. Listen to this. My eggs are probably drunk. <laughs> My eggs are probably drunk. Fertility, I according to you. I can't wait for, for little Lulu to come here because wait, babe, listen. Is little Lulu ever happening? Lulu did. Lulu looked at you like you can't wait for your imaginary friend to happen. Who said that? <laughs> like she's not. <laughs> you know, I don't think Lulu wants a baby. But you were telling me about how. Your dad and your mom just try to figure out how to do things in a way that's the most efficient. And sometimes the gender roles get switched because it's just the most efficient thing they do. And he's not thinking about, well, because I'm the man, I have to take out the trash. Girl, if you're closer to the door, door, you can take it out. Like he doesn't worry about optics. He worries about being logical and efficient with his partner, his life partner. And how yes. him doing that has kind of made him evolve out of misogyny despite being an old school G. You know what I mean? And I, I thought that was kind of dope because that's a real life way that men can find their way out of misogyny just by being more logical. Does it make sense for you to cry right now for me for me to hold you even though you're because you're having a bad day and I'm having a good day? Like, it doesn't matter if you look soft for crying. Do you need to cry? Get it out. Yeah. And then they, like, I hate it when men say like, oh, men are, women are so much more emotional. But I'm like, you keep bottling things up and then now you're punching holes in the wall, which yeah. is anger is also an emotion. And mm -hmm. you really just needed to cry. Like before, you could have let it out. And I mean, like, I, to me, that's logical because I, I think the same thing that you said, like, I think that they, you keep trying to, they keep trying to say that men don't have these emotions and they do. A lot of times they just don't have avenues to express them where, mm -hmm. where they also feel safe, where they won't be questioned and stuff like that. Because I've had several male friends who told me that they dated women and maybe they did cry or something. And the women like made fun of them or were like, oh, like, are you soft? Absolutely. Like, like that Absolutely. that happens a lot. So like men probably don't even feel safe like expressing their emotions because for fear or something like that. That's called internalized misogyny, guys. So when we say misogyny 
also hurts men. We're talking about all those women who call you bitches for having feelings. That's the misogyny that you fed them. So internalized misogyny makes women toxic too. It's not just men who are being toxic. What do you think, Jeffrey? Men do the cycle in because again, I definitely know like I even as a little boy and I can specifically remember when I heard the first time telling me, oh, boys don't cry. Like I even heard that as a kid. Mm. Um, as sometimes, you know, a lot of guys do and just in growing up in life through maybe therapy or just your own emotional development, you learn like, okay, that was some bullshit. So you get past that. But even with girls, like it's taught to, you know, women to be a certain way, it's to be, you know, prim and proper. And this is how you treat a man. This is how you get a husband and X, Y, and Z. And I feel like those are things today that we now know through, you know, therapy, through, you know, you know, terms of gaslighting, we know, um, um, shit, it just slipped my mind. I can't think of it, but I guess when does the cycle of passing down these traditions, I don't know, values, thoughts, when does it stop? Because even in 2023, there are these people who know where we are in the world now with emotional intelligence and all of this that are still teaching boys and boys, you don't cry. You have to make money. You got to be, you know, physically protective and teaching girls. You have to be prim and proper. You got to dumb yourself down or, you know, you have to settle for this or whatever. When does it ever stop? Honestly, um, this is actually a perfect segue to the next, the last topic that we're going to talk about today. Daddy issues. A lot of men have daddy issues. We talk about women's daddy issues all the time. Like, oh, she a hoe because she had daddy issues. A lot of men don't have strong men in their lives to teach them the vastness of what masculinity could be. And so they have to gleam little snippets of masculinity through music, through art, through television, through media, through social media, through friends, on the court, in the locker room. They're piecemealing together what they think masculinity might mean because there's nobody actually being there to not just tell them, but also show them. You see what I'm saying? And so, and and then they're told they're not allowed to have feelings about it. So now you have all these men who don't even know what masculinity is outside of this pastiche of a quote they've, they've done out of collaborating with a bunch of people who are equally broken. And they're also being told that they can't be tender. They can't cry to their father. They can't ask their father to help them throw a football, how to ask their dad, how to ask a girl out, how to get their hair cut. All the things that men should be getting from other men, they're getting from their peers or from women. And that hole inside of them that just wishes they had a dad, right? And so I think the answer is men. I know me and Lulu come on here and we try to pontificate and help. And Jeffrey, thank you for being brave, for being the person that we targeted at a lot as the only man on the panel. But I think if men were hearing this from other men who they respect and admire, that would be the first step. Because unfortunately, even though I can talk about internalized misogyny as a woman, misogyny was created by men. So these men are mad at women for taking part in a system that they themselves created, right? And so it's going to take men talking to men to unravel some of that. I don't have the power to do that. I can inspire y'all, but y'all have to have that conversation amongst yourselves. Yeah, and I can agree with that. But then in a, in a situation when, let's say, the dad is gone and the mother is holding on to that resentment or anger. And so she's then teaching her son these, you know, your daddy ain't shit and this ain't, this and that isn't even happening. It's going into his mental. What responsibility is that on it being, not just being a daddy issue. This is basically. It's it's, it's, still, it's it's still a daddy issue, but toxic femininity and toxic masculinity don't um, absolve each other. Like, so those are two things that are happening in conjunction with each other. Right. And a lot of the bitterness that women feels is a counterbalance to misogyny. Like women who have been abused by the system are now understandably bitter at the people who they feel are the archetype of their abusers. It's the same thing as if we were talking about racism and someone said, well, how do we eradicate racism? And I give an eloquent speech about how white people have to have conversation amongst themselves. And then someone says, but what about the niggas who be shooting each other? Pause. That's still a symptom of what happened at, at the top of the food chain. Misogyny is still the top of the snake, right? So any nasty shit that women do underneath it they have to take accountability, but they're not the root cause. So in the same way that black folks who feel completely disenfranchised by white supremacy act a fool, even if they fixed it at the second level, the primary level is still white supremacy. So when it comes to these relationships, the primary level, the root of the cause is still the misogyny and the patriarchy. And it's hurting all of us. And it's making women bad guys too. So I'm saying women are not absolved like we didn't do anything wrong. I'm saying we're not the root cause and we have to grab it from the root does that make sense so how do you grab like i guess yeah that's the, what what is you the, grab it from the is, root is by there, having is there a answer i guess or safety psychological so... safety is the answer people need to feel like they are psychologically safe enough to reveal where it hurts so that we can acknowledge it and heal it you can't heal something that you haven't acknowledged if a man can't admit and Lou talked really bravely i think in a previous episode about how she was dating this hyper masculine pro athlete who had daddy issues 
right? And so he was fucking on everything and trying to assert his masculinity in an external way. Those girls who he was fucking on, you don't think they walked away bitter that this NFL guy just dropped them and, and went back to Lulu? They probably had their own feelings, right? So now this man who had these daddy issues is acting a fool and creating even more bitter women who think niggas ain't shit. And then that's what creates the cycle. So the root is we have to tell men that they are allowed to have feelings so that they don't have an excuse to keep bleeding all over the place. Men are need to have feelings because honestly, and I keep on mentioning this, black men in particular are the highest group committing suicide. All those feelings that have nowhere to go turn into self-harm. So for me, this is not even just about, oh, I'm a woman anti-misogyny. I'm sick of seeing my brother suffering. Like it's actually me being compassionate towards men. Like I'm sick of seeing y'all suffering because even when we say fuck y'all, which by the way, statistically speaking, a lot of women are leaving men behind because they feel unsafe and they're prospering, but we're still not connecting. I don't want a world where all these women are rich and all these men are suicidal and broken and bitter and we're all just looking at each other from across the street. That doesn't serve my community. I'm trying to get us to cross the street and talk to each other, but women are not going to cross the street if you're still unsafe because you won't admit what's wrong with you. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. I like I went, I went on an on a academic tangent. It's just, it, it breaks my heart that it starts with feelings. People always hate that, but it does start with feelings. What do you think, Lulu? Oh, sorry, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, you have something to say, Jeff? I was going to say, yeah, it does start with uh, communication and communication in the home. If you're lucky enough to have a two-parent household, of course, but even if it's just a single-parent household, I don't know. A guardian, know. a brother, an uncle, like guardian, there, there yeah, could be other just, men in your life. communication, and, you know, those are just things that I don't know what goes goes on in white households because I was not raised in a white white household. So No, I you weren't. On that. Right, but, you know, in majority of black households, you know, I'm a black boy, south side of Chicago, real deep south of Chicago. Um, feelings, therapy, things like that, that's just not what you, you go to church. You go to church, you go to pray it away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You go to church, you pray it away, or we, ju- or we just don't talk about it. That's just, from what I know and experience and growing up and friends, like, that is something until fast forward the 21st century, late after the 2010s, that Black people finally started talking about, you know, uncle cousin touched somebody or somebody got a whole family over here or what happened why daddy left why mama left or this and that like now we're just getting to this place where it is okay to talk and it's still not enough because to your point blue it is still a lot of you know trauma going on mm-hmm. but it's just now becoming a place where it's not so taboo or you're just told to go to church and pray about it. jeffrey i'm gonna give you a praise report real quick i watched you lulu watched you we all watched you go through something that was very devastating um emotionally speaking and you were surrounded by men who loved you you were surrounded by men who loved you. And I don't think you recognize how dark you could have gotten without that. A lot of men don't have that. Oh, yeah. Like when your heart's been splintered into a million little pieces and you have brothers who will show up and spend time with you and make you laugh and love on you. A lot of men, imagine who you would have been without that. And that's oh, why black men are dying. <laughs> we we did too. I wasn't going to bring that up. but we... I went down a very, very dark path for a little bit. But, you know, luckily. But, but imagine it alone, though. To... Imagine being alone. And going oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's also definitely my friend. Like, I tell everybody, I have the best friends in the world. Like, everybody got great friends. But I truly have met some of the best people that God put on this planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also, you know, prior to meeting a lot of my friends, you know, I was lucky enough where I, my mom, she was a single mom because my father, he passed. Like, it wasn't, uh, you no, know, nobody left anybody or anything like that. But I just had good structure growing up. You know, I learned to appreciate Black women because I have a Black sister, a Black mother, Black aunts, and grandmothers. I have Black men in my life, uncles, brothers, cousins. So even though my father wasn't there, and, you know, in the community, we grew up going to church. Again, one of those Black families, we was in church Monday through Sunday. Damn, that's the whole week. I mean, at the same time, now I understand it. My mother was, my father died when he was 30. Oh, he's um, a baby. Oh, my God. Yeah. So my mom, she, she's a year younger. So she would have been 29, maybe turning 30. And they had already had three kids. I don't. I, do you know what I was doing at 30? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. No, I was doing at 30. You're lucky so you can't now, get people pregnant. Yes. We, and, we right, as, a, as a kid, all we know is I want, I want, I want, I want. But now as an adult, I know what bills mean. I know what, you know, time schedule, all that means. So I'm like, oh, my God, she was 30 years old. Father passed. You want to cry. But at the same time. This bill, rent's got to get paid. Mortgage got to get paid. Lights got to be on. I got to feed these three big head ass kids that's asking for every pair of Jordans under the sun and X, Y, and Z. And so now it's like, okay, I I get that. And luckily, I had a good just family and structure growing up. You had a village. Was, yeah, I had a whole village. So then, you know, I had. The, Did you ever deal with the the loss of your father though? Because you can have oh, a village. A, we uh, went to therapy. Like after, I vaguely remember it because I remember the. Oh, 
the psychologist. Her name was Miss Lux. And she had this big ass nose. <laughs> like this. Damn. Tongue. Leave it to Jeffrey to go to therapy for grieving in front of Lady's face. You see how shallow he is? Like, she my therapist, uh, can I get another one? She had a bowl <laughs> Her nose too big. It distracted me. This lady is ugly. I need a prettier therapist. She had a bowl haircut, this big ass nose. It was really pointy. Uh, But I remember that. But being so young, truly not understanding the concept of death and not understanding therapy and because I was six at the time so somewhere in between ages of six but here's the thing about you being that young you don't know what it helped you with though a lot of times when yeah it could have helped you circumvent a lot of shit and the fact that your mother you were talking about how it became popular in the 2010s the fact that your mother back then before the 2010s had the wherewithal as a black single mother to put you in therapy that's also atypical like you guys don't understand that Lutasha having a traditional nuclear family like literally the Huxtables 3.0 right you having a mother who had a village and mental health counseling. Me being on some witchy shit, I don't know what the hell my asterisk is. We are all atypical. And all those things that we take for granted because they're just a part of our story, without them, we would have been fucked like everybody else. We really yeah. would have been. Yeah. So it's, 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 it does take a village. And I, I think that's why the submissive breadwinner thing is so short-sighted to me because that takes away the humanity and the community aspect of a relationship. When you just want someone who's pandering to your insecurity, where's the growth in that? There's no yeah. growth in that. You can't grow that way. Lulu, you have any thoughts? No, I think that all that is true. And I, I really, it, it's very admirable, your mom, that she took that step to make sure that you guys were okay. Because I'm sure she was completely overwhelmed having three small children and a dead husband. She had to just keep moving Damn. forward. And you just got to yeah. keep going. Like, yeah. I be here sometimes, the water go out and I be freaking out <laughs> be like what's going on <laughs> but imagine like literally you just gotta you literally just have to keep going life don't life don't stop not everybody has it to keep going though i think even that has a little bit of privilege in it that we have the mental health to keep going there's some folks who they will shut down i'm like i can say i ain't got no water i'm gonna just sit in the corner and get dirty like it's it, i know a lot of people who don't who do not know how to do life and i honestly think this generation is being compromised because they are so used to staring at a screen and not seeing the sun like they can't even socially like mingle at a mixer, let alone deal with like life in real life. You know what I mean? So I, I really do have concerns around this generation and the way that they communicate intimately with each other. They're really smart, but you can be smart and have intimacy issues because you're always behind the screen. Damn, this conversation um, went a lot of places. It started off real nasty. It stayed nasty for about an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was it was. <laughs> It was it was nasty for about a good hour, friend. I don't know what kind of rating I'm gonna put on this. I don't know if I just should do a disclaimer. Now, back to the dick. <laughs> you know we don't get this, we this thirst trap. <laughs> oh my god, you brought it back to the thirst trap. I'm gonna put, put eggplant emojis all over. I'm gonna just go. You know how they just beehive, They put bees all over. Spam account. That price spammer spammer. <laughs> Guys, I don't know. I don't know how to. You know what it is? I I only do thirst traps privately. Like I know how to do a thirst trap to the people I'm dating. But not for like public consumption. I don't want y'all like. Why do I want y'all to see all that? We want to see it. We want to see it. We want to see it. Figure it out. Okay. Um. I. I. I will. Maybe I'll just republish the video, and that will be my because somebody said that it it counted. Someone in the comments was like, "This counts." This look at you doing your third shot early. They said that in the comments. We need a still shot. We need a still shot. You guys, this this thirst shop life, I don't know how y'all do it. It is exhausting. Um, I, 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 I'm I a righteous woman. There's a half a thirst trap and now you're exhausted. I got right. I got an idea for a photo. You just need a what? long wig. And do what? <laughs> a, a long wig and do what? No, a lot of and hair. Just, just have the hair over my, like hanging over my titties. <laughs> Jeffrey, that's porn. <laughs> that's not a thirst trap. That is pornography. That is taste. <laughs> taste bottom. You know how big my breasts are? That's a lot of hair, friend. <laughs> it's giving Rapunzel, but okay. Um, you guys, uh, when, when you see an episode called Thirst Trap, you will just know that that's me reporting back. The goal is before December 31st. So I have between now and New Year's Day. So I'm committing that between now and New Year's Day, there will be a tasteful, classy thirst trap up for at least 24 hours. Because um, y'all know, unlike y'all, I delete shit. <laughs> Catch us while you can. I might actually have it only up the day of the show so that people have an, a, a reason. Maybe I can do the third shot from the show and we'll do it like maybe we'll, we'll hide on the show and do like a have a big old <laughs> uh, photograph. And no, no, this is too much. Lulu, how about you and Jeffrey both post thirst traps this week so I can have some inspiration? I've posted enough. Go to my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like it's nothing but thrift shop. You see my titties more than your own. I might go to the gym later. It'll be one up in about three hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have seen every inch of Jeffrey's body at this point on his Instagram. How about you, Lulu? When's the last time you posted a thirst trap? I don't, I posted one, I guess, kind of on my birthday. I was in a bikini, so I think I, that was... Yeah, that, that counts. That counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm willing... I don't post that often, so I'm willing to, to try. Lulu, it's not like it's going to be hard for you. Just pull out the bikini again. Lulu <laughs> works out eight days a week, so I'm not... So this is Jeffrey, okay? Mind you, I feel like I do need to represent for the for the plus-size community, so maybe that'll be my body positivity thirst trap. That that's the reason. It'll be for a noble cause. Yeah. For, for all the thick snacks out there who need representation. That's how I have to tell my Damn. brain that you know, really, Jeffrey, I'm trying to make it <laughs> academic so it feels less skeevy. All right, guys, we have to wrap up the show. Um, because Lulu has to head to the airport to see her family. Uh Jeffrey, I actually changed my plans. I'm not going home for Thanksgiving anymore. My mom's surgery got moved to next month, so I'll be oh, okay. on the East Coast longer next month. So if you're doing anything this, this week, let me know if you're around. Um, guys, as always, please share your socials because somebody wrote up in the comments like, what's Jeffrey's social? He cute. So Jeffrey, what is your social? Look at your face. Are they, are they cute? Jeffrey, that is not my place. <laughs> I'm not going to pick you out on the show. That is, you can uh-uh. find me at Blue Centric. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> really? That's how you, actually, you can because he's hypertag. So you can go to Blue Centric, no. you can find exactly where Lulu and Jeffro. Mm-hmm, you Y'all tried can it. You find me on everything at Jeffro5, J E F R O 5, Instagram, Twitter, all the things. Please be um, conventionally attractive and have a six pack so Jeffrey won't hurt your feelings. Don't Look, be uh, real ugly. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. don't hurt people's feel. I don't say mean things. I say Jeffrey, your, your face is loud. Your face is very loud. I say loud, it to so. y'all. I would never say that to a person. Your eye white say to the room. Like, oh, uh, look at that. How about you, Lulu? Where can they find you? Uh, Lou underscore Lou one nine on Instagram. And you guys know you can find me at Blue Centric, the way Jeffrey tried to pimp it out just now. Um, we have a, a second promo coming out from uh, last week's episode. This week's episode is going to come out tomorrow, actually. I, w- I want to get it out as soon as possible so I can go into my holiday coma. You guys, I just want to thank you for taking this ride with me because it's been so fun. And Jeffrey, your homework assignment is you have to pitch a story. We did some, some breadwinners today. We had a whole episode that was not about hot topics that was it was nasty um lulu i didn't think your your episode was gonna be this nasty friend um jeff we can't hear we can't wait to hear well i did i said i want to i want to get so i get, i'll find the guests but i want to have a straight man come on and talk about why they are so intimidated by specifically black women but we can say women but we already have her brother coming on to do that on the eight daniel i don't think he would be intimidated lutashi i, I mean i don't I don't think you can. Ah, so you want to find somebody who actually is intimidated I want to find an and going to admit it. Yes, and admittedly, somebody who will stand in their truth and be like, this is why this is a problem for me and most men. Okay, yeah. so Je- Jeffrey's yeah. Problematic Kings episode. Um, Stay tuned for that. Uh, Jeffrey, when you find a Problematic King who's willing to come in the studio, let me know because that would be interesting. What do you have to say, Lulu? I said, yeah, I think that would be very interesting to find somebody like that. There's tons of them. I just hope that they're willing to say it out loud. To say it out That's the thing, yes. And and come toe to toe with me and Lulu. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> really, Jeffrey? Okay, you know, I mean, on that note, if you yeah. want to learn more about, about emotional intelligence, this episode was sponsored by uh, the On Thy Shift workshop. Please go to OTS, uh, that stands for On Thy Shift, OTS24.eventbrite.com. We have classes that are starting in January. It's virtual. You can do it online via Zoom, the way we're doing this call right now. And it teaches you how to be emotionally intelligent in a really tangible way so that you don't walk around being problematic kings especially men you are welcome it's not just a women's class every single class we have a couple of guys who come in and who are shocked by how much they learn so please sign up and lulu and jeff i hope you guys have a great thanksgiving a little safe flight jeffrey safe cooking because i know you gotta get right back to cooking i have been potting for four hours now my butt hurts i'm going to sleep i'm gonna take, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take me an afternoon delight nap um i love you guys so much bye 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 family